129. That is absolutely spectacular for Colin Osborne. Remarkable from Robert Thornton. Game wow. shot in the first leg. What a leg that is. 12 start. The only unbeaten player. Game shot in the second leg. This is really territory. Do you want to go for the double 19? Game of course he shot. did. To get more relaxed. Oh, oh, oh boy. Double 18 for a shot monstrous 147. Bradley Brooks. Hi there, welcome along to the Modus Super Series where we've got that Friday throwing feeling and the finals night field will be complete at the end of two sessions of play today. Guiding you through the action, myself and Paul Nicholson alongside me. And Paul, um, this group has had a very different kind of complexion to last week. We've got one man running away, but everyone else seemingly in a bit of a scrap. Yeah, I think so. I think there are going to be plenty of people coming through the, do the doors today thinking I've got a genuine shot of nicking that second spot. But I think if we're going to be brutally honest, uh, even someone like Kieran Smith, who is in second position, will say, I think Colin Osborne is looking really good to get through this group, possibly in the top spot. It's always encouraging to get 10 points from your first day, but now you've just got to back it up with some of the similar performances uh, that you can possibly find for Friday. Yeah, one important change from yesterday. Owen Bowden, he has had to withdraw, unfortunately, due to medical issues. He is replaced by Lloyd Walker in this group. So we could just take a look at the way things are panning out for the week. Victor Tingstrom already through to finals tonight. We're going to have White Ted Brooks, Wazuski, Groenevel, Burgoyne all still in action tonight. But Lloyd Walker coming in to join Osborne, Thornton, Beanie, Smith and Whitlock. Um, interesting, we've seen players come and make a real impact before. He's a local player, he's got his opportunity. The name that springs to mind is Tommy Morris, who did the same thing and has been a regular ever since. Yeah, I think this is a really good shop window for Lloyd. So many congratulations for him for getting the call up and we thank him for being able to be here today. But this is a huge opportunity for him. I think there's two ways of looking at it. One, he might put pressure on himself because he sees this as an audition for possible future invites. But I personally would come in here, take the shackles off, go and have some fun with it and try and spoil someone's day. I remember when we had our Southampton studio and Jamie Caven was unable to play on a Friday, Jamie Kelling came in and won every game. I'll never forget that because what have we seen from Jamie since then? Plenty. So opportunities right there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the man who he did say he wanted to spoil, he wants to be top bottom, everyone in between. We'll hear from him in a moment. But Colin Osborne, who is top and won all five matches yesterday. Uh, the Wizard not really having to move through the gears, but just looks like the best player in this group. Yeah, he just cruised through at a, a somewhat low 80s level. But when you're able to just be better than your opponent and doing the right things at the right times, you can see that it's 3-3 here, but he's stealing the game away from someone like Corney earlier in the week. They're the kind of games that he had yesterday. Not vintage Colin Osborne, but very, very plucky. And that's the kind of stuff you need in a Group C situation. What did you make of Aaron Beanie on his return to competitive darts? He's been out for a good couple of years with a shoulder injury. He's had an operation and he's decided now is the right time. Did that show yesterday? Yeah, I think it is the right time for him. He looked like he went through all five games without any pain, which I think is the biggest thing. As far as his level of performance... He won't be happy with his level of performance. Let's get that out there. But this is the first step on what's going to be a, a one, two-year journey to get back to where he wants to be. And if he is getting sufficient uh, game time on the hockey here and elsewhere, he's going to he's going to improve. But you've got to start somewhere. And I think in this company yesterday, it was a very fair barometer of where he's at. I think what he wants for day two is improvement. If he can grab himself two, three wins, I think he'll be a happy man. And speaking of improvement, the player that came with the biggest fanfare was Mason Whitlock. He did seem to get better as the day went on. Absolutely. I think he started nervy, but then who wouldn't? This was a big deal for Mason yesterday, but as the day went on, he became more threatening, and by the end of it, he was doing things like that. So imagine how he feels going back to speak to his dad on the phone, speaking to his family in Australia and all of his local friends, because he's got plenty of those. Imagine what his confidence levels were like when he went to bed last night. I think he really enjoyed yesterday and 
after speaking to him this morning, he is more ready today than he was at this time yesterday. So let's see what he can do. Yeah, big beaming smile on his face. And he thinks he can get through. Let's have a look at the table and we'll try and dissect who the runners and riders are going to be. Look, Colin Osborne having won five out of five and with the experience that he's got, you would think would get through. Kieran Smith is in pole position to join him. But who out of that chasing pack do you think is the most likely to spoil that, that top two? I think it has to be Mason at this stage. I can't realistically look at Robert in his current physical state and mental state this week as a threat. I know he's got a perfect record of making Saturdays. However, I just don't see him as a threat come today. I think it's just too far. If Mason gets a really good start and Kieran Smith does not, then we've got some action on our hands. But there are a couple of names who could pose a threat. But when I look at Beanie and I look at Thornton, I see them as someone who is not really at their best. I think someone like Mason is more likely to find that today. Yeah, now you may have noticed there were seven names in that table. Owen Bowden's place does stay intact. Of course, he got points. All those results remain the same, but Lloyd Walker starts on zero. He can actually qualify, but he's a big outsider to get there. Here is the betting and Lloyd Walker, 1,001 to win the group. Paul, is that worth a pound of yours? I think it's worth a penny, <laughs> that's for sure. But I think the situation that Lloyd needs to do, he's going to have to win all five games. We know that. But... He's going to need uh, Kieran Smith to lose all of his games. That is something he's done a couple of times this week already, so it's not out of the question. So, I don't know. It could be another crazy Friday. We just don't know what's going to happen. Right, let's get it on, shall we? And he can affect that straight away because Lloyd Walker plays Kieran Smith in the opening match of the day. And Lewis Martin had a chat with the incoming Walker a little earlier on. I'm joined by Lloyd Walker following Owen Bowden stepping out due to medical reasons. Lloyd, when did you find out you'd be joining us today at the Motor Super Series? So I found out last night when I was at an ADC comp. Uh, I got a phone call, I thought that's a weird phone call. So I went outside, answered it, and then um, one of the boys that works here rang me and was like, oh, do you want to play? I was like, oh, yeah, when I get my call up, I'll happily play. Do you want to play tomorrow as a dropout? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, I'll play. Get me in. Brilliant. And what are your expectations for today? You got the chance to disrupt the group a little. Is that what you're planning to do? 100%. Go in there, beat who's at the top, beat who's at the bottom, and then hopefully try as far as I can. And then hopefully, because I'm beating people, random people go through. They don't expect to go through. But we're played by you. See what happens. And a quick question on the ADC you did yesterday. How far did you go? Oh, don't ask that question. <laughs> I lost in the semi final last night, 3 2, unfortunately. Brilliant. Well, it's great to have you join us today and good luck in today's tournament. Thank you very much. Yeah, an interesting complexion here at the Super Series on Friday with Lloyd Walker making his debut, but halfway through a group. The local player, nicknamed Lightning, is out to cause a few shocks. Would he have the impact that we've seen other players that we just spoke about when basically being a substitute after the unfortunate exit of Owen Bowden, Lloyd Walker fills that position and makes his Modus Super Series debut. He's reached the semi-finals on the development tour. He is from Portsmouth. He uses Simon Whitlock darts, not the only one in the group, the 23-year-old. And Kieran Smith, the 27-year-old Gloucestershire player who was the runner-up in the Scottish Open Fred this year and Lloyd really has turned first. his week around. And on. One thing that I didn't ask you, Paul, when we just had a chat there was if he wins this game, how difficult is it for anyone else to catch him then? Extremely hard. 96. And that puts maybe a little bit of pressure on Lloyd to try and get a result for someone that he knows quite well. well. 180. However, there's a risk here today that Kieran Smith could have a lot 59. less pressure on his shoulders than at any point this week. Because he got four wins yesterday, very hard-fought wins, we may just see the best of him on day five of week seven. 44. Now, I don't want to get too carried away with the standard from yesterday because we all know 97. that everybody played under what they wanted to do yesterday but it was a particularly difficult group because everybody struggled at times 140. but there is a possibility today that these players will find another level 77 we'll get into the numbers in leg two 37. 
Well, this is a really strong start from Kieran. He's not really sure what to do here. 59. Did have the luxury of using the 18s there and leaving a different two data. But he might just be under the most kind of pressure you can get in this spot. And Getting Lloyd's done brilliantly there to leave tops. Speaking of tops, Game shot the that will do very Kieran nicely, Smith. and his confidence will be swelling by the second because of that. Second leg, it's Kieran 15 darts, break of throw. I'm not really sure how today could have started any better. Maybe we should not talk about the badge on his left arm, by the way. 96. Chelsea? Yeah. He's wearing blue in Portsmouth, and it's not Portsmouth. That's 60. a risky move. Well, I'm also not even sure it's allowed. We'll have to uh, check the rules on that. Football allegiances. 90. It might, it might be the only time he's wearing it. We'll speak to whoever runs this show and uh, get that covered up. Did you bring a spare, Kieran? 97. I looked at that blue star and I was very optimistic of him being a Newcastle United fan. Well, obviously not. Maybe he's just a big football fan. It's all just an no, amalgamation. Well, I can't imagine he's a five-time world champion with five stars on the back of his shirt. So it must have something to do with league 59. titles or something. I can't imagine Lloyd's shirt's got anything to do with football unless he supports Burnley. 59. We're definitely in the wrong portion of the country for Burnley fans. It looks like it's going to be a very, uh, it should be a very happy Saturday for Portsmouth 60. fans, shouldn't it? They are set to seal promotion back to the championship tomorrow. Yeah, it does look like a party weekend in Portsmouth, not just for the football fans. But possibly 96. for darts fans, and in particular, one dart player here this week who will join... The group of players already coming back 90. in late May for Champions Week. 64. Could that be Mr. Smith? Well, Kieran Smith is looking to go 2-0 up here. That's a wrong double. 48. Just got to make the point here. If Lloyd Walker loses this match, he won't be able to qualify. It's as simple as that straight away. He has to win this game. Because, of course, Smith and... Osborne 84. would both be on 10 points and it would be well, it'd be 16. almost impossible. He'd go from 1,000 to 1 to a million to 1, wouldn't he? Because he'd have to... No, sorry, they'd both be on 10 and he'd have only the ability to get to 8. So that would be it. Game shot on the second leg. Not Kieran going so Smith. well for Lloyd. Your penny, Paul, is at big risk here. I feel like it's Lloyd Shucks. to throw first. Game on. I keep my pennies in my pocket instead. And remember, if you are having a flutter today, please remember it's over 18s only. Be gambleaware.org for more information and please gamble responsibly. Well, speaking of a party in Pompey, do, 100. if you can, come and join us on Saturday night. If you want a Saturday of sport, maybe head down to Fratton Park and then straight after, come here to the live lounge on London Road, North End. And we can... Guarantee some darting drama and some arrowing entertainment. It's a unique atmosphere. Just scan that QR code, book yourself a ticket. Just two pounds of booking fee. Where can you get that value for money? Eighty for sporting theatre, which we've certainly had in abundance of late. Can you imagine what it's going to be like in Portsmouth tomorrow? Every single place 96. will be jammed with people who are happy, and isn't that nice? Yeah, because that... I've I've been in this area for about a year and I've never seen anybody happy. 134, like 137. You've gone early, Murphy. I come from the north where everyone's nice to each 97. other. 97. It's a good job you live outside of town. <laughs> but do come, we are friendly, really. See oh, we tomorrow. are. I, I promise you, he's a very friendly guy and he does like living in Hampshire. 40. Or should I say, you're just over the border, aren't you? Big moment for Walker. Game shot and he lands leg. his first Lloyd winning Walker. double 
in his hometown at the Motor Super Series. I do wonder why he's called Lightning. Well, I like the backstories. So on. if he has a good day today, we're going to dig a little deeper. We hope he hasn't been struck by it in the past. Well, this looks like an opening 61. for Lightning. After Kieran Smith threw two terrible darts. Good recovery with his last one. Yesterday I was having a bit of a, a chinwag with our referee Owen Binks. 59. He had the audacity to say that he didn't think that AC DC were any good. And they have a lightning bolt in between the AC and the DC, don't they? Well, just goes to show he knows nothing about music. However, I really like what I see with this action. I like it a lot. 100. When I see an action for the very first time, I form an opinion immediately. Then I study it a bit more. But what I see from Lloyd is exciting. 59. It's a no-nonsense throw. It's got a lot to admire about it. He might just be one of the best finds of 2024 100. if he uses this experience in the right way. It's interesting as well, his darts. He uses Simon Whitlock darts. When he plays Mason Whitlock later, you will see almost the progression of Whitlock 96. darts because Walker's using something that Whitlock was using very, very recently, isn't he? Ironically, Simon is not using either set at the minute. 180. Knows where the camera is, really as they all do now. I'm going to blame Tommy Gunn for that. I think it, I think it started with uh, David Schlichting. I think he was the first turtle power. 81. Lord, you require 62. Never thought I'd hear you say those two words together here at the Motor Super Series. Can he put these two targets together? Game shot. He does. Double 16 Lloyd found Warfare. for a 62 finish in lightning quick time. He's turned this game around and he's the back in it at 2 2. And he, this is, in terms of a debut, there are no signs of nerves. Game there on. is no sign of anxiety. And it's excellent arrows from Lloyd Walker, who, as you can see, is averaging 94, just slightly over. 100. And that will continue to increase. And Kieran Smith here could find himself 58. in a vulnerable position. Look, Lloyd Walker getting through is not really a believable script from a standing start on no points 55. and five games to play. But what he can do here is open the door for the likes of Mason Whitlock, for the likes of Aaron Beanie, maybe even Robert Thornton. 59. He said you like you see like what you see with Lightning's throw, Paul. Let's have a, another view of it. Elbow height is really consistent. Leans over just a little bit I into see. his right-hand side. I don't mind that whatsoever, as long as he's not tilting. And in a sporting sense... That's twofold, both mental and physical. 59. Still does that thing that I, I can't really figure out why people do it when they step on top of the hockey first. 96. He might just be about to cause Kieran all sorts of issues. You can see from his point of view, from this camera angle, he pushes the dart through the air. It's not necessarily a throw, it's 56. a push. Lloyd, you require 170. One, three, four to leave 36. 96. You'll have to settle for one treble to leave a two data. And at times yesterday, Smith did show little signs of frustration. 99. But he's done well Lloyd, there to leave a finish. 74. Now, what does he do now? Does he go for the 25? Because it's a calculated gamble. <laughs> the gamble hasn't paid off. He's 66. put his chips on black Gary and it's rolled in red. 170. Is he coming back? Press pause. Now you can press play. 130. Lloyd, you require eight. Go for another spin then, Lloyd Walker. And he will turn this game on its head if he hits double two. Four. That was a good attempt. 
Kieran in require 40. Kieran can count himself very fortunate to have this shot. Game shot. Takes full there. advantage of it. I Kieran think he Smith. knows exactly what is at stake here. He really wants to be in Saturday to show everybody Sibler that the player we Kieran saw in Group A first. is not who he is. Well, as Game you can on. see, evenly matched this pair, but this could be a really pivotal game. The real difference is Kieran Smith has doubled better. He's finished better. One Three out of five. That's 60%. That is top, top notch checking out from Smith. Whereas Walker's had actually one more dart double, but only managed to hit Four. two. What I can tell you about yesterday is that Kieran had 37% on his doubles for the day, which is very, very good. However, it wasn't the best 96. of anybody in the group. That went to Mason Whitlock, who was 41% for the 134. day. Talk about a chip off the old block. He did get four maximums yesterday, his best daily effort so far. But still averaged just a shade over 80. Now, if that was to be transcribed into today's play, he might pick up two or three wins, in my opinion. However, 60. if we transcribe that to Saturday night, he doesn't win. And if that's me being blunt, I'm afraid we're getting towards the end of week seven. I've got to be blunt here. Up against the likes of Whitehead and some of the other guys from Group B and Victor Tingstrom, 80 averages don't cut it. So he's going to have to find another 27. level. In terms of getting, though, getting there, this is a big, big moment for Kieran Smith. Wins this match, he opens up a six-point gap, remember. If he loses a match, he's guaranteed to only be two points ahead 84. for the next round of fixtures because Whitlock and Beanie meet next. So this is a very, very welcome win, assuming that he does indeed 45. step forward and complete the job. We're getting to the stage where Kieran if Kieran Smith hits 24. this and somebody loses the next match, the loser of that match will be close to out. And Lloyd Walker will be out. And he's out shot after his match. first match. He can't Kieran make it Smith. through. All he can do now is put himself in the shot window for a return to the Moda Super Series. Stepping in. He played well on his debut. Some decent stuff. He got back from 2-0 behind to 2-2. But it is Kieran Smith who closes out the win. The doubling in it really was a difference. Four out of seven for Smith, including a 78 finish. And he wins it 4-2, moving on to 10 points and actually moving to the top of the table. Six clear of Mason Whitlock and Aaron Beanie. And that gives that game even more importance. And it's coming up next.
Welcome back. It's time for The Apprentice. Mason Whitlock to try and make his impact here at the Super Series. And he means business against this man, Aaron Beanie. Who I think is displaying a few beans of his own on the collar and sleeves of that shirt. He takes on the 21-year-old Mason Whitlock. If you weren't watching yesterday, that name might be familiar to you. And it is indeed the son of the great Simon Whitlock, former World Championship finalist, European champion, World Cup of Darts winner. And alongside me, a man who was runner-up in that World Cup of Darts with Simon, first Paul leg, Nicholson. First Aaron to throw first. Game on. And that is Owen Binks. He will be... Very, very pleased with the compliment. Yeah, Jack 60. Garwood was with us yesterday, but Owen Binks in today. And Paul, aside from the, the fun of the beanie shirt and the stature of the Whitlock name, 55. this is a really important game of darts, isn't it? Isn't it just... Now that there is a six-point gap between the chasing pack and the top two, 45. we have to explain to anybody tuning in for the first time that it is the top two that go into Saturday night. You don't get there. You don't come 26. back. Twenty-six. Very simple. And as far as Osborne and Kieran Smith are concerned, they have, at this stage, a three-win gap. So whoever 100. loses this game is effectively gone. Yeah, true. Robert Thornton is Fitting playing Colin up. Osborne next, and... I mean, he might already be gone, Thornton, because of that opening result, Kieran Smith winning. But he has to win all of his matches, doesn't he, to have any chance? 96. And I'd start with... I mean, he's got it hard, hasn't he? Thornton plays Osborne and Smith in his first two. So it looks like one of the most mentioned 85. records at the Moda Super Series is coming to an end. 11 consecutive finals night appearances. Never not made it, Robert Thornton. I hasten to say it, and... I don't want to see it, 23. but he's not going to make it. Not the way he's been playing. But if he gets out of this jam somehow today, then he may just be some form of literal wizard. Well, we did see some wizardry from... What was that? I meant that with eleven. due respect, but he was going for a treble 17 there I believe so I hope so yeah, Whitlock produced some wizardry in this match 66. yesterday took out 164 to win it he's now left 170 in the opening leg if he takes that out Beanie will be sick of the sight of him but he can stop him by hitting tops 26 Mason wide of target 170. and a chance Give that a really good chance, actually. 100. Aaron, he he went for the flight 20. to try and nestle it in and just missed the mark. No score. It's all gone wrong at the Racing end of this leg 70. from Aaron Beanie. Double eight for Whitlock to nick it. Double four now. 62. Aaron, you require 40. In the previous turn, Aaron was getting further away. He does not want to get further away again. He's getting closer. Having to shuffle along the hockey. And he Getting does find a route to success. Beanie, Beanie bags the opening leg. Second leg, it's Mason to throw first. Game You've on. You've got to think that maybe Matthew Edgar's had some sort of input into that dart shirt. Aaron doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who's going to put canned hey, goods on a dart shirt. It's often been pointed out to me that I look like I've got a few baked beans on my shirt of a morning when I've had to rush out. <laughs> yeah, but these are on purpose. That's, been... that's up there with one of the strangest things I've seen on a dart shirt. I like, that. I like the camera shot we just did there, actually, because he'd been and gone. <laughs> well, there we go. Thirty-eight. I'm surprised he didn't go with Beanie Babies, <laughs> like we were talking about yesterday. Each to their own. 
But we know that Mason Whitlock's shirt has something to do with Melbourne Storm. 25. Very good rugby team. I mean, I use beanie bags at the start of the the leg. 60. Not a fan. Of beanie bags? <laughs> Not necessarily. I am a fan of this young man. I think... 99. He's got things to learn. He's only young. He's got big ambitions of making the World Youth Championship at the end of the year and maybe getting himself on tour in the next year or 41. two. Nice that is going to require a lot of hard work. Well, do you know how I spent the early hours of Friday 22. morning? Go for it. In bed with you and Mason Whitlock. Nice interview on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. I watched that after last night's session. Really, really enlightening stuff. And really Game confident stuff, just like that finish, choosing nice to go the 13s well. route and then hitting tops. But yeah, I did like the way he spoke about the... You asked him a question about Look his ambitions. He said he wants to get his two card on. next year. Really confident. I think a lot of young players now earmark... PDC tour cards early because they've seen other people do it. 46. Look at someone like Aaron. He got his at the first crack. Mason's probably saying, well, why can't I do that? He may just grasp enough experience here this 59. year where he feels he is good enough to go to Q school and have a decent crack of the whip. Time will tell. 60. But if you go back 20 years or even just a little bit longer than that, when people wanted to become world poker champion in Vegas at the World Series, they needed to travel all over the place to get the amount of table time to be wise enough to become world champion, like Phil Helmuth or Johnny Chan or Dan 60. Harrington, people like that. And then online poker came in and people were getting the amount of table time in a year that people had spent 57. decades trying to get. What we're seeing at the minute with the Motor Super Series and some other places people can play it, like the development tour, which is something Mason is qualified for. One. They're getting more board time than people of this age got 20 years ago, and they are fast-tracking themselves to the Pro Tour. He's found some comfort here in this leg, hasn't he, Mason Whitlock, after that? Brilliant finish in the previous one, the 79 to level up at one apiece. And I just got the sense that Aaron Beanie looked totally comfortable for the first 24. 9 to 12 darts of the match. Nice and then towards the end of that previous leg, the first leg, it started to go wrong and he hasn't really recovered since, even though he won that leg. 58. Mason's got to expose this, get a win, and get it by the biggest margin he can possibly think of, which is obviously going to be Four legs to one. 43. Mason, you require 48. Well, Beanie got that wrong. Hasn't left himself a finish. Won't matter Game anyway. Whitlock is in the mood now. Mason He's hit his Whitlock. stride. And he leads the match 2-1. And he'll have the perfect darting day well, today if he qualifies to because his first. dad, Simon, is Game in action on. on the European tour. It doesn't play till tonight. So I would advise watching the Super Series this afternoon, then watching the European tour if you're a darts nut. 44. This evening and then rejoining us at 10 p.m. for Group B. What and a you, day! You know for a fact that Simon's watching this. He's not going to miss a game. No, absolutely. Big supporter. He's really taken. He he's taken loads of people under his wing. To be fair, I don't think people are aware of how generous Simon Whitlock is with his time and advice. And look to have him no, as your dad. Fine. You're going to get that anyway. But he's mentored loads of dart players oh. over the years. People have got no idea just how much he has helped people travelling from overseas to this area, giving them tips and tricks as to where to play, how to play. We could go for the next few years and that generosity of Whitlock Senior will, in my opinion, it will be told of because people need to know how generous he's been. He's had an open door policy of his own home to allow people to find their way here and it's something that he spoke with me about 96. for an interview that's going to be released on the motor super series youtube channel yeah tomorrow so if you haven't already subscribe and make sure you're the first to see all of this new amazing content including 40. interviews with both mason and simon whitlock 
who plays Cameron Menzies in that European Tour event this evening. Providing that Cameron turns up and, require 111. and is on time. Has Beanie turned up on time here? Well, that is the dart that means the finish is over. And did you see the little smile from Mason Whitlock? It's because of the finish he's left. 43. He's going to get a chance Mason to do it to Aaron again. I think he's enjoying this experience, and he would have loved another crack at that 164. Aaron requires 68. He's short of it this time. Textbook finish on double 16. 52. But still a chance Mason for Whitlock Jr. 106. Sixty-six. Has he got an odd flight in today as well? That would be another little nod to his father. Game shot the four. He'll be shaking his head now, not nodding it as Beanie has levelled up at two-two and broken the throw. Fifair gets Aaron to throw first. Game on. That was a chance. I think you were with me when we first met Mason. It was in Sydney, wasn't it? At the Four Seasons Hotel, 95. not far from Darling Harbour. Yeah, I remember staying there. Lady Gaga was there at the same time, not meeting Mason Whitlock. She was in the penthouse on the top floor. I remember it was quite a funny story, actually, wasn't it? Because she had groupies outside the hotel every day. We were arriving back in a security-driven vehicle, and they were all thinking that it was going to be her that stepped out, and it was me and thee. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, Lady Gaga was on her own floor. And I remember sharing an elevator with her security guard, and he was impossibly big. I don't know how he got in the elevator. Big Dutch lad. It wouldn't mess with him. Yeah, the monsters were there outside the hotel for the couple of days as we had sixty. the Sydney Masters. Great tournament. It was a real privilege to be there. But back then... Mason was about half this size and he had impossibly blonde hair. 96. Yeah, he was only six foot then. That's an important point in the match, 55. this. And that is a nice little result for Mason Whitlock, Beanie not leaving a finish. Oh, that's got to be the improvement today. I've, I've said it a couple of times yesterday. That first dot's just got to be a 58. little higher. Even if it misses the treble 20, it's got to be something he can use. When he's blocking it with dart one, he can barely use it. 81. You can see Mason, it, that Beanie with his last dart, he really followed through a lot more than the first two to get that right. Treble 20 would give Whitlock a go at the ball. Still 64. goes for it, but not to win and the leg. Leaves it handy. But Beanie will get a go at 78. For an unexpected lead. 58. I think maybe Mason, that body is coming 65. into play on dart three, like you said, Murph. It's not doing him any favours. It's going to be double 16 for Mason. Game shot. Very well Fifth found. Left. Confident Mason shot. Whitlock. And a chance to get a 4-2 win here. Win, and you've still got a chance. Lose. Mason to throw first. Game and the on. exit door is very close. He really asserted himself, hasn't he, a couple of times in this game. The 79 finish, and then that 65. And now this. And Whoa! now that. And you could have put those. Never mind the head of a pin, on the point of a pin. You cannot accuse this young man of not being able to finish a game. 62. When I came to Beanie yesterday, that 164... A definitive highlight from his debut here at the Motor Super Series. 54. Just because he throws this way now, don't think he's going to throw this way in the next two or three years. I think his throw will evolve. He takes on Lloyd Walker in his next game, the 44. first of the second round of fixtures. And he knows him. Yeah, he He'll feel very him, comfortable he? against him. Referenced him in the interview that you did with him. But it could work both ways. Walker knows him as well, doesn't he? Correct. And I think Lloyd Walker's going to be a spoiler all day long. My guess here is that he still will go for the bullseye. He wants some fireworks to finish. Another. 
Oh, he would have loved to have ended it with such style. 66. That would have been something. But look on the bright side. It's 66 for the match. If he finds it, it will be six points. 85. Right, from six points. games. 66. And an all square leg difference. Not out of it. Just yet. Two eighteens. Forty eight. He will be back. He'll be back for one of his dad's favourite doubles. Mystifyingly. He may be the exception to the rule that right handers don't like double seven. nine. Mason, you're required. Well, I think 18. the apprentice finals are this weekend, actually. Will this apprentice reach our final? Ten. He's getting close. Only require one Aaron Beanie here has one last chance, you would think. And that chance has already disappeared. It's a has been. Fifty-two. Mason, you require eight. Two fours. Go He's still alive. Still got Mason ambitions Whitlock. of getting through this group, but he needs a lot of things to go his way over the next few matches. But he's done his job. He's beaten Aaron Beanie. And now, I suppose, he could do with Aaron doing him a favour a little bit later in the day in some of the fixtures. But that is what we've just seen. Mason out-averaging Aaron by a good 10 points. But just like yesterday, his doubles were very, very good. 41% yesterday and 40% there in his opening match. So well done to Mason. When we come back, it's going to be Osborne versus Thornton. And if Osborne wins, he sends the Thorn packing. Well, the next game is going to almost seal things for both players if it goes a certain way. If Colin Osborne wins it, he is almost through. And if Robert Thornton loses it, he is almost out. In fact, I think we could pretty safely say that will be the case if yesterday's result is repeated. And Colin Osborne, well, he's embarking on 
Something pretty special in prospect here because we mentioned yesterday that he won every single game for the second time this week. What's to say, Paul, that the Middlesbrough man can't do it for a third time? I don't think there's anything that we could see it that would deter him from doing that. Get off to a nice winning start against the 56-year-old from Scotland, two-time world senior champion, nicknamed the Thorn, of course. Very inventive. But it's very befitting because he has been in the thorn in the side of many a player like Taylor and Van Gerwen and others in the past. But the wizard has got his destiny sitting in his lap. It's not in his hands. It's been sitting in his lap overnight. Minimal work to do, but it's still work to do. He would like to get it done early so he can take the pressure off. He does not want to have to play Lloyd Walker in game 13 with something to do. He wants that to be a bit of a warm-up for Saturday, or maybe even playing nine, Kieran Smith five. in game nine. We know what Robert Thornton can do, and if it all comes together on one day, on any given day, then who knows? We made the point yesterday. Write him off at your peril. If he wins all of his matches, he can get to 12 points. That can be enough, and in a group like this, it might be. But the problem 55. he's got is that opening win for Kieran Smith. Two players are already on 10. It is going to be almost impossible for Robert Thornton to turn this around, but 44. he has completed the almost impossible before. That's true. I just wonder if he's in the right physical shape to do so. He's been struggling with a bit of a niggle this week. You might think to yourself, it's only a 26 gram dart, flinging it 60. nearly eight feet. It can't be that bad. But these intricate sports can give you very intricate injuries. The smaller the bones, the smaller the tendons, the smaller the muscles. 98. Sometimes the bigger the pain. Forty-four. Colin, you still in leg one, and he already looks quite negative. Maybe it's just not there this week. Whereas Colin is right there. Game and that is right where he wants it to be. Colin Osborne. Colin Osborne carries on where he left off yesterday. A fabulous hundred and sixteen checkout to start this so match. I guess Robert to throw first. Against. Concerned looking Robert Thornton. And I guess, Paul, that this is the worst possible start for Thornton. If the fixtures have maybe been the other way around and were just repeated from yesterday in order, he would have had the chance to build up some momentum. But playing the top dog in the group straight away, that could all be zapped out of him immediately. Absolutely right. And for somebody with his guts and determination... He might think of this as the right person to play coming up first, but there's nobody harder statistically to try and beat first thing because he was the best averaging player yesterday. 85. And if this doesn't give you some sort of indication as to how attritional yesterday was, I don't know what does. He was the best averaging player of 81.1. 137. People struggled yesterday. Whereas Colin just moseyed along with an 81 average, 28% on the doubles, which is well below what we'd expect. But with seven maximums and a high out of 131, it was still enough for 10 points. And that's the job. In the words of Roy Keane, 40. he did his job. But the big surprise in this group is is Robert Thornton. The bookies had it him and Osborne pretty much dominating between them and everybody else making up the numbers, really. But while well, Osborne well, has lived up to that billing, Robbie despite not producing anywhere near his best, Thornton certainly hasn't. I do get the feeling that some people who backed Thornton yesterday morning have had their fingers burnt. 81. Because I just do not see him getting through this group today. And I'm a Robert Thornton super fan. But I do have to be honest at this juncture. Yeah, it's going to be a miracle if he 82. makes it. Eighty-two. But he require eighty-six. An opening victory is really the only way he can give himself a chance. He's got a chance at the ball here. 
42. Can't find it, and Osborne's already Morning cleaned up for finishing this range. Yet. He did have his best performance yesterday against Robert. There's nothing stopping him doing it again. Might stay on that line, you know. Looks like a great guide for the 60. And the reason he stopped is because he didn't know if it was in or not. 44. Robert, you require 44. Long way off tops, double 10. Game Sneaks it in, Thornton there. levels, Robert keeps Thornton. his faint hopes alive. I think today could go one or two yeah, ways. We could either see everything Game wrapped off. up within six to nine matches. Or the last game of the day between Kieran Smith and Mason Whitlock could end up being a shootout for second place. I know what I'd prefer to see. 60. Let's have another last game shootout, shall we? Just like last week. One hundred. You know, last week, let's remember, uh, this time last week, Jimmy Van Ski was in this group and he needed the last two results to go his way. And both of those things happened. He went on to win on Saturday night. 45. You never know. That's the thing about live sport. You just don't know what can happen. So you do have to remain resolute. 57. It's just a question of what's left in the tank for this week. Yeah, we've had some fun group C's recently. A couple of weeks ago, Jared Cole hit a nine darter. And he got nowhere near getting through. I'm sure he's thrilled at you saying that. He won't be watching, will he? One hundred. There's a big weekend in the world of darts, not just to see who comes through in week seven of series seven. I wonder if this week's going to be won on double seven to get the jackpot. That would have a certain chemistry to it. But there are tournaments of plenty around Europe and the world. Eighty. Robert, you're right. It was almost another. Tom plus out for Colin Osborne. Well, this could be another 116. Osborne took it out in the first leg. Thornton can't take it out in the third. 58. So, well, then you're double 12 for Aussie. Tiny little hop on the right toes. Just to get calibrated. Game and that is a 2-1 lead for Aussie. Or should we call him the wizard? Or both? Fun like fact, actually. First. You know Game how off. a lot of people call me Nico? First person to ever call me that was Colin. And it stuck. 83. I think he just gives someone a nickname when he meets them and it immediately just sticks. Let's face it, if you're getting a nickname of Colin Osborne, it's, it's a bit of a bit of a treat. I'd like to tell a bit of a darling story at this juncture, actually, before we get too deep in this match. I want to take you all the way back to the early part of 2009. A time where Robert Thornton was just starting to get something going in PDC darts. He had one title to his name. We went to Irvine in Scotland in the early spring. And this 59. was around about the time where... The UK Open was in the summer. It wasn't in early March like it is now. We went to Irvine. Turned up pretty much in Robert's backyard 22. at the Magnum Centre. First day. And you're wondering, I wonder who's going to win today? You're looking around the room. There's no Phil Taylor. 45. Who's going to win? Robert won on the Saturday. And he had a game against Anderson in the middle of the day, and every single fan who was in attendance that, in that day 59. stood and watched that board. And Robert was unbelievable. And he walked away from the board as if to say, he's not going to beat me on my own patch. 43. What did he do that weekend? He won them both. 
And back then, winning back-to-back Pro Tour events was a rarity. He was one of the first people to do it. 140. Yeah, on his day, was up there with the very best. Not many years ago, he would have been playing in the Premier League last night. 94. Colin, you require Paul's 40. Born looking to open up an advantage of two legs here on tops. Game shot in the fourth. And leads 3 1, and it looks like four. Robert Thornton's race is run. And it kind of leads me on to ask you a question that go from very Fair positive memories to, to maybe more negative conversations. What do you put the decline down to? The way we see Robert play, is it just sort of battle scars, physical injuries? Do you think it's just 55. what happens as you get older or. Maybe a lack of intensity that he's not, of course, on the tour anymore, so not practicing as much, not treating it as much like a full-time job. Where do you see the the I issue defy. that has seen him fall from such great heights? I think when you consider the, the fact that he's 56 years of age, imagine how difficult it must be to do anything at a world-class level at that age. It's very rare 100. for someone over the age of 50 to still be a world-beater. It's rare. Not everybody is Philip Taylor. Not everybody is Tom Watson. 59. Let's face facts. We all perish and we all decline. But it's just a question of how much longer we can keep that at bay. One. It may just be physical this week for Robert. He might come back in a few months' time and feel hunky-dory. We sincerely hope that's the case. One hundred. He's still got the talent... But it's being able to do it over the course of 25 matches in a week. The hardest schedule is to be in Group A and Group C and then try to get to Saturday. And it just seems 43. as if it's too much of a task for Robert in this week. Yeah, it does seem to have taken its toll. We could see him at the end of the previous leg just stretching that arm out again. And just after Colin Osborne had stretched his lead to 3-1. Thornton's still fighting. He's on 83. He's got a chance to break the throw here. The game might not be over yet. The race might not be run yet. 26. Robert, you, you know what we used to say? Don't put Robert in the corner. Well, he's looking in the corner and here. The fifth and he finds it. 3-2. And quick as a flash, suddenly he finds that Spare talent again. But you can see, first. really game struggling on. with the throwing arm. Having to play through the pain barrier. 59. If you're going to have a documentary made about a player and it would be on at some sort of streaming platform or even with us here at the Motor Super Series, it's really easy to pick someone who is on form and you want to pick apart their journey. But if you had a choice as to who you would do a documentary about, who would it be? Whose story would you want to tell? Well, why don't we open that up to the chat room? And who knows, maybe, just maybe, we will make it happen. 43. So you post in there. Paul Nichols asked the question, who would you like to see us make a documentary of? Obviously, you're gonna, we're going to restrict it to players that are here at the Moda Super Series because it makes our life a lot easier. 86. Yeah, we're not going to go and do one about Raymond Smith. He's 12,000 miles away. But yeah, keep them realistic, but we'll be interested to know who you would like to know about. Who would you like to see behind the scenes? 100. Finding out what they have for breakfast and what goes on between their ears. I think there might be a lot of people seeing Martin Adams. 100. Well, Thornton, I'm sure, will be mentioned. And he's trying to make sure he keeps himself in with a mention in terms of the race for qualification for finals 100. night. 100. Robert, Colin Osborne 16. took out this 116 checkout in the very first leg of this match. Thornton looking to hit him back with the same shot. 76. Good try. Winning leg six may just be a stay of execution. I just wonder what Robert's going through at the minute. He's stretching that arm out every single time. Hey, He's at the back it. of the stage. I don't Robert, know whether it's a shooting forward. pain... Whether it's some sort of ache, tennis elbow, I'm just guessing here. But now it's mid throw. Just keep doing it, Robert. Flag. Robert Thornton. He could be 
One legged, one arm. From final leg, it's Colin to throw first. Losing his Game sight, on. he'd still try. He is just one of those people. You'd want him in the trenches. Giving himself a chance. Has to break the throw. 100. Remember, he's probably going to have to win every single match today. This could be the hardest. His leg difference isn't a disaster at this point, but... 99. The closer the games are, as we go through every round, it's not good news. Well, a few responses coming 45. into that question. We will keep looking at those throughout the day. Uh, so one person didn't understand the assignment and said Luke Humphreys. Uh, Daryl Pilgrim. 95. Someone going for Glenn Durant. They think he'd be good in a documentary. He's played here once, I believe. He has, but he's here a lot, isn't he? 43. But I suppose with your criteria, he would be a good one because he has had an almighty fall. 100. Conan Whitehead, another name that's mentioned. See, I think that would be really interesting. And give him free reign to say whatever he wants. That would be hey, fascinating to watch and to listen to. I'm a big fan of Conan. I think his brand of honesty is something that is sadly lacking in society. <laughs> Another one saying Bo Grease. Well, we can promise we'll at least interview Bo Grease because she is playing here at the Super Series soon. Chris Mason for me. I think that would be amazing. Right, well, we've been talking about that. Robert Thornton has sneakily got himself down 70. to a finish and could Robert, be about to win this match. What a turnaround it would be. And is it going to be the start of the ultimate turnaround? One thing 86. now could break his heart, Robert, and that's a 158 finish from Colin Osborne. Surely not. Not going to happen. But if Thornton finds tops, it looks like it will be his best performance in Group C because yesterday his best was a 75 average. Require 40. To take the first step on the 1,000-mile journey. But 20. Robert Thornton stumbles... Colin, you're required. And that 38. could result in the journey being too far. Straight for it. Aggressive as well. Double eight. Game Osborne Shannon will be feeling very, very good about that. Balls. It is a game that could have got away from him, but Thornton now knows that he is painstakingly close to the exit door before Saturday for the first time here at the Motor Super Series. They both dropped under the 80. In fact, their averages were identical, which is a strange twist of fate. However, Osborne on 12 points now is a mere one win away from guaranteeing his spot into Saturday night. It already looks good. I'm sure he'll get there at some point. But who will stop him? Who could possibly join him? When we have Whitlock against Walker in the next match, that might tell us a little bit more.
Thank you for joining us once again here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. This is the Moda Super Series. This is Group C. And we still have possibilities here in Portsmouth on Friday afternoon of somebody joining Colin Osborne. He looks pretty safe at the top on 12 points, doesn't he? However, Mason Whitlock on six points, courtesy of a win a little bit earlier on today when he beat Aaron Beanie by four legs to two, is now up against someone that he knows rather flag, well. It's Mason to throw first. Game on. This is Lloyd Walker. And judging by that greeting, these two have shared each other's company quite a few times. And I just get the feeling this might be the kind of game where Mason can relax a little bit, albeit in a situation where he does need the points. I'm the asset Paul Nicholson, and this is Lewis Martin for the second 100. day in succession. Welcome, Lewis. What happens next? What could possibly happen next? What are your thoughts? Well, these two, as you say, no, are enough. good friends. I saw them practicing on the board before the tournament started. Lloyd, so, local to the area. He played in an ADC tournament last night, as I asked him before today's proceedings he said he got to the semi-finals but this is his chance to prove 44. himself what an opportunity for him getting called up last minute could he be the great 56. disruptor in today's game mason here mason whitlock that is with two trebles wants to leave himself finish 135 but he's, he's still in with a chance of qualifying for Saturday's final night. Oh, hello, Lloyd. Is that what it's going to be like for your next four games? If it is, sign me up. Bullseye. I think these two are going to have some fun. And if they are, come on, lads. Let's see what you've got. 88 left. Now, for a moment there, I thought, because he spends time with Mason, he might go a small matter of double 19 bull. However, somebody is sipping from the conventional cup here. Game shot and Whitlock left. takes the lead Mason with a Whitlock. very good double four. He puts his arms out in apology. Signal against Lloyd to throw first. Don't know what you Game think on. of that, Paul. Very well documented that I hate people apologising on the hockey. I have never apologised once. For winning 45. a leg. Let me just say for winning a leg. I will apologise if I do something bad. And everybody knows that I have done some things in 50. my career that I'm not proud of. However, when you win a leg, it's your job up there to do so. So why would you apologise for it? He's just such a nice guy. 78. We love having him here at the Super Series. As do the fans. We've had some great fanfare for Mason Whitlock and his debut here. 100. Now, before we get too deep into this game, Osborne against Thornton yielded two players with the identical 100. average. 79.68. I'm reliably informed that that's the ninth time in the history of this tournament that that has happened where two players have had the exact same average. Bit of a rarity here in Portsmouth. But Whitlock, with a win in this game, would put big pressure on Kieran Smith, who's got the small matter of thorn to next. 57. The battle for second spot, because I'm saying that Osborne's going to make it, it could be really interesting 44. over the next four or five games to see where it lies at the middle point. Yeah, well, here he is on a 1-1-4. Can he finish it on double 19? 95. Lord, you record 134. Well, if he was trying to hit Sydney, he just hit Cairns. Well, Lloyd wanted something to say about it in response, but Mason here on 19. Which way will he go? The free double eight. And he's 2 0 up. Mason Whitlock. It's his doubling that has won him these games. I spoke to him before. Before the tournament started today, and that's what he said. He said his doubling has been on form. 41% yesterday, and 40% in his first game. And when you consider 99. where the elite players are, 
and I'm not just talking about the best players here at the Motor Super Series, I'm talking about worldwide. If you have them play for one calendar year, if you're around 40%, you're doing really well. And let's face it, his dad really was a great doubler. 36. Still is. But if he's going to be in that vicinity, numerically, for the rest of this year, he's going to cause trouble. 57. And maybe it's just the scoring that needs a bit of polishing. Well, on the topic of how he's feeling, Paul, he's made his debut. Today is his second day at the Super Series. 41. How do you think he'll feel today compared to yesterday morning? A lot more comfortable based on what he was saying to me at around 11.45 a.m. when I bumped into him. He looked a lot more at ease. 59. He was a lot more free-flowing with his words. He looked a lot happier to be here as well. I think when you come here for day one, you've got so many emotions Whoa, running through your veins and through your head. You've got to try and handle them. Whoa, now that he's 100. been through that, he knows exactly where everything is. He knows how to handle it, and he's got another maximum on top of the one that he got in his first game. 27. Well, as you referred to, he gets that maximum there, brings him down to a finish. He's got time to think about it, but Lloyd Walker is coming back at him, applying a bit of pressure there, leaving 91. But here we are. Is he going to finish this on tops? 78. Good try. Lloyd, you require 91. Great line. Really well thrown. Oh, he went for trouble 14. 51. Mason, you require. I would have sworn 40. that double 17 was the shot there. However, yeah, the third there. Mason, Mason Whitlock, Whitlock is starting to find something better than yesterday. A good start. Like to throw first. And he may Aim just on. be the story of the day if he keeps on doing things like this. Well, confidence can take you a long way One in this game. I know myself playing in games. If you're confident, if you've had time to settle into a tournament, it can make the world of a difference. 59. And this stage, it's just the stage itself. We're in a large room here in a live lounge. There's cameras everywhere, lights Whoa, everywhere. As a 180 is hit from Lloyd Walker and those lights are perfectly on display. But that's a lot of pressure for someone who's not been in this situation before. 58. But he's obviously learning, and as we've referred to, spoke to him earlier today, he was saying how nervous he was yesterday. But his friend is Lloyd Walker, 25. and is the person he is playing right now. They're friends. Maybe that's helped him settle down a bit as well, having a familiar face around. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. I always say 24. that. But does Lloyd want to make him settle because he's facing down the barrel of a 4-0 defeat except for this leg where he's a lot closer to a finish now as Mason all the way back on 340 here. Maybe a temporary reprieve. Really good switching from Mason. Lloyd, you require 112. Who found his best performance towards the end of yesterday's session. Great first start. Now... The right thing to do here is to stay away from the 20, which is exactly what he's done. Game shot. Bravo, Lloyd. Lloyd. Bravo. Lloyd great Walker. thinking, great execution. And you're not going to be bageled by your buddy. The Famous Lloyds. Can you think of any? Game on. Lewis? I think there's a darting player with the name Lloyd that we can all think of. Yeah. But it's his surname. 45. I think Colin Lloyd, who's actually in Riesa in eastern part of Germany covering... The International Darts Open for the PDC to do it. He's the most famous Lloyd in darts. But I mentioned Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber. A famous character played by Jim Carrey. 97. And he has a dreadful Australian accent in that movie, by the way, when he gets Austria mixed up with Australia. But how about Lloyd Hunnigan? If you don't know who Lloyd Hunnigan is, you're not into boxing. What a fabulous boxer he was. One of the most underestimated 123. British boxers from the previous generation of around about the same time as Hagler and Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. 60. He was brilliant. Can Mason here hit the knockout punch and win 4-1? 
We know he'd love to. 48. And his dad, of course, if he is watching, a big shout out to him. He's got a big game today against Cameron Menzies. Yeah, I get the feeling that Simon might be getting ready to go to the venue sometime in the next hour. So do yourself a favour, Whitlock Jr. Whoa, Keep doing that. Get yourself a double four and make your old man very, very proud. He already is. Taking his time here, wants to leave himself a finish. That's wise, but drifts into the free, unfortunately for him. Double four for Mason Whitlock. And he wraps up to win 4-1 against Lloyd Walker there. He hugs his friend there. They're good friends behind the scenes. But Mason wins the spoils for this one. Keeps himself in contention for getting through to Saturday. Averages a solid 83. Three 180s for Mason and two for Lloyd. 100% on the doubles for Lloyd, but he only got the one chance. Mason, of course, getting the four doubles out of nine and the highest checkout of tops. Next up, we've got Kieran Smith facing Robert Thornton. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Moda Super Series live here in Portsmouth on the South Coast. Do we get any better than some afternoon darting action? With you? We're with you throughout the afternoon and into the evening a bit later. Right now, we've got Kieran Smith and Robert Thornton. Kieran Smith second in the group as it stands on 10 points. He had a great day yesterday after struggling earlier in the week. Thornton here has struggled a bit himself with some injuries it seems he's been stretching his arm through the games but he's but hanging on by a thread in this get one first. but there seems to be a bit of pointing at the stage on. kieran smith here is going to throw first and let's see how he can do paul what do you expect paul nicholson the asset of course joining me here again no, what can we expect from this one this is a, a very important game for the table because kieran smith has now got someone Tapping him, tapping him on the shoulder. 
Mason Whitlock, only two points behind him. The leg difference between Kieran and Mason is eight legs, which, as we all know, can be eroded in one match. So now that he's got pressure on his shoulders, that first win against Lloyd Walker for Kieran Smith has proven to be very, very handy indeed. Now he must not stop. He must not rest on his laurels, otherwise someone could catch him. 60. As for Thornton, no. I know he's not 100% this week. However, he could well be 82. someone who steals vital legs away from players like Kieran in their quest to make Saturday. 58. And it's all about Saturday, of course. You can come and join us here in the Mo Moda Super Series Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Come on down. We had a great atmosphere last 58. weekend. If you want to know what you're going to get a flavour of, have a look at that. Jimmy Van Shee, of course, winning that Saturday. Scan the code on screen now 58. to get your tickets. Just a small booking fee. We'd love to see you here. But I don't think you're going to be seeing Robert... So if you've reserved your seat for Saturday night in the 100. hope of seeing the Thorn, I hate to disappoint you, but I don't think it's going to happen. As for this guy, his participation in Saturday is currently 50-50. 76. It's up Robert to him what he does next. It's in his hands. This is his game in hand on Mason Whitlock. And now that he's missed that double 18... 19. Robert Thornton Kieran is Robert languished, 32. with Kieran having more chances to take the first leg. He's gone for the show, but the double is a no. Is it a double 16 for Kieran Smith? Moves over, slight adjustment. No score. Robert Unlucky Robert there, couldn't quite hit that, but Thornton here will want to take out this 85. Will he leave the ball? Yes, he does. 60. Oh, the pain of 32. missing the bullseye. He's had plenty of them in his career, including one to win the UK Open 12 years ago. Got to give it a go, Kieran. Game that is a terrific day. dart, considering Kieran's the circumstances and the difficulty of it. Well, if he's a Chelsea like fan, Robert to throw first. I suppose that's like a free kick from Didier Drogba around the wall. I think if we're talking about football today we might have to dodge any 60. Liverpool fans I think last night might have stung a bit losing to Atalanta 3-0 however I'm sure Kieran Smith doesn't really give one hoot about that no, he's in blue it. today which is something that Robert Thornton is all about because in old firm terms he's a ranger he's not from Celtic 59 sometimes best not to bring that up actually Especially when Robert is around John Henderson, who is about as vociferous a Celtic fan as anyone could possibly 60. be. But they have something in common, those two. They're both a world senior champion. You do wonder that the fourth running of that tournament will 58. it continue to live north of the border, that trophy. Well, if... Kieran Smith is going to have a club logo on the side of his shirt. It should be 46. the only team in West London, the mighty Queen's Park Rangers. I see what you did there. Nine. Well, I, I looked at Kieran Smith's shirt this morning and I saw a blue star and I was very hopeful. I thought it might have had something to do with Newcastle. Oh, well, it didn't end well. At least Kieran did the right thing there when he was sitting on 299. First things first, leaving 299 is an error. 59. You should never really be on that number. Secondly, if you are, you must start on 19s, which is exactly what he did. So at least he got that right. Well, he'll be hoping no one Stanford bridges the gap to him second in the table. Not going to be a 167 for Robert. 99. I do wonder what kind of standard we're going to get from this game. Because yesterday, when they were playing, 76 
was a good enough average to beat Robert. At no point in Robert's career have I said ever that 76 is enough. A sign of what's Game happening this week, but that is the second Robert leg Thornton. to the thorn. Doesn't matter whether it's in the middle or not. It was good enough. So look, it's he shakes it off, shakes it off, and Game. pats his head. That is hard work, but it is done. It's 1-1. One, one. But talking of resurgences, Kieran Smith, Paul, you had the chance to speak to him 40. in the studio yesterday. He's had a big resurgence this week, following a struggling at the start of the week. What do you think has changed for him? 93. I think what we've seen over the last couple of years since we came to this studio and in our previous studio as well, is that when you fail in Group A, 140. just the ability to wipe the slate clean and start again, it's almost like that saying, a change is as good as a rest. You feel like you've had three days free of charge and then the real urgency kicks in with Group C. No more oh, second chances. And maybe Kieran's the kind of player that plays better with a bit more jeopardy. Well, a follow-up question for you, Paul, is he has a real possibility now of 41. getting through to the Saturday. He will come across players who he may have struggled with earlier in the week. How is that mentally to deal with? Yeah, it's pretty difficult when you look at Conan Whitehead last night. Finished his campaign last night in Group B with a 99 average. Beating Bradley Brooks, who last night was fabulous. Not only 21. has he lost to all of the other Here people, the this is the only person he's beaten in Group A. As much as that's a feather in his cap, this week we have to look at the real situation. Everybody else he has lost 40. to. Osborne, Whitehead, Groeneveld, he's lost to them all as to whether he can get through the mental barrier of that. Only he can answer it, but based on the standard he's brought this week, I don't expect him to, but if he did, 76. I'd be pleasantly surprised. Well, he leaves himself 76 here. Still got a chance to take this out. Oh, he drifts into the one, and you can see the frustration on his face of that. 40. But Robert Thornton is quite far back, so he will have another chance at it. One hundred. This one's a bit attritional. That's the word I tend to use when things have gone south. Game shot but he's gone further. northeast there, and he has got a lead. At the minute, Robert is not really enjoying well, playing against Robert Kieran because he's first. lost his last two matches Game against off. him. He's struggling, isn't he? You can see that he's stretching his arm once again. What he's doing is he's curving it around 85. the right side of his body because you can tell that there must be some sort of shooting pain, whether it's in the elbow department or the upper arm or the lower arm, we we don't know. 82. But if you're doing that kind of movement, it's it tends to be more around the shoulder. Take it from somebody who knows 48. I've been there and it's not nice. And when you've got pain in that department, throwing darts becomes very difficult. 54. Allow us to take a moment out of this game just to let you know about an influencer charity event coming up on the 28th of April. Eight influencers and eight professional darts players are going to be joining us here at the Moda Super Series. 42. You have the chance to decide who plays with who. Voting is now open on X, formerly known as Twitter. Check out at MSS Darts to vote or for more information. We're going to see some great names here, including the mighty Pie Face, who is always seen at the darts. 82. I might even pop in myself to watch that. Not that I'm a follower of a lot of influencers. 81. But that might change come the 20th of April. Got to be down with the kids, right? 92. V 
Very rarely have I seen Fair Robert in this it. kind of discomfort. It's not a nice thing to see. But what you have got to learn from this situation is that if your opponent is in trouble in the match, score-wise, or physically, or mentally, you must stamp all over it. I'll give you a perfect example of that in the next leg, I promise. And it will be a rather brutal example of it. But it is a sign of what you have to do as a dart player. Well, Kieran Smith leaves double 16 here. Just misses Robert Thornton here Robert with a chance to get back level on one, one, two, eight. Chance has gone already. 72. Good recovery. But this is for a crucial break Kieran of throw. Requires 16. This is not what Mason Whitlock wanted from this fixture. He was very much hoping that Kieran Smith would be locked at 10 points before they go into round three. Places an awful lot of importance on when they play each other. Game but now that Kieran player. has the 3 1 lead, you do sense, based on what we've seen, that he might not look back. Kieran to throw we saw first. Kieran Smith there take Game a moment ball. to compose himself. We've seen that from top darts players, including former world champion Rob Cross. He always takes a minute before going for a big double. Pull the asset Nicholson. 59. Do you think that's something that helps a player? Yeah. Kevin Painter, when he started doing it around 2004, he made a world final. 60. Something he continued to do throughout his career, and he's not finished yet. But Rob Cross has taken it to the next level. He does it more often. You've got to do what's right for you, not what's right for anybody else. And that leads me to my story about being merciless. 60. At the 2012 World Grand Prix, in round one, it was Colin Osborne who was playing James Wade. And in that match, James 60. was not feeling very well. It was not a nice situation. But what Colin did was what he had to do. He knew that James was not in the best shape. But he had to win that best of three set match. He went on to do so. James got the help he needed. Colin went through to the next round. If you sense weakness, if you see it, you hear it, you smell it, you take advantage of it. This is a gladiatorial sport, and you must do that. And that's Kieran's job from here on out when it comes to Robert, or anybody else this week, for that matter. Six. My name is Lewis Martin. You're here with myself and the asset Paul Nicholson here in the live lounge, the Modus Live Lounge, in Portsmouth on the sunny south coast. It is sunny today. Not that the players will see it. When you come into this place, it's like going into a mine. It's time to go to work. And you only see the sunshine when you're finished. Well, has Kieran got light at the end of the tunnel here? Can he win this game 4-1? He'll be hoping so. Thornton here will want to set himself up quite well. A treble, a treble here would help him, but can't get one. There's something else that's missing from this game as well when it comes to Robert's strength. It's pace. When he's playing his best darts, the game zips along. Well, he did have the luxury of leaving double one if you wanted, Kieran, but you've done the right thing in not leaving it. Listen, I think he should have done it. it would have been great entertainment for us here on a Friday. Friday frenzy if he would have left a double one. He's left 52 here. This is a chance to wrap up the game. He's got double 16. One more dart at it. That'll Game do. And Kieran Smith match. has done exactly what he needed to do. He's won his last three games against Robert Thornton. And now that he's on 12 points with a superior leg difference to that of Colin Osborne, he is top of the table. And winning by three legs might just be the difference between getting through this group and not getting through this group. Mason Whitlock, who is four points behind the top two now, has got an awful lot to do. However, Osborne, who wants to win this group, is back at the end of round number two, and he's playing Beanie, Mr. Beanie, the man with the big beans on his shirts. He's next.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. From wherever you're watching, I hope you're enjoying this afternoon's action. Get a tea, coffee, water, whatever drink of your choice. And settle back for this one. We've got the wizard. No, not Simon Whitlock, although we do have a Whitlock, the apprentice. We've got Colin Osborne here, who has been pretty good. He's won all his games. And he'll want to cement his place at the top of the table with another win here first against Beanie, who's been Game there on. and done it with a PDC Tour card. I see what you did there. He's going to have to play better than his first game, that's for sure, Lewis, because it wasn't good enough to beat 45. Mason Whitlock in game number two. And when you consider that Colin has not lost a game in this group so far, He's going to have to raise his level by at least 10 to 15 points, 60. you feel. Is anybody finding their best darts in this group? I hasten to say probably not. But there are a couple of players that are trending in the right direction. One 60. of them is Whitlock. The other one, for me, is Kieran Smith. But Mr. Consistency Osborne has been living at the top of the table since the off. But at the minute, 100. he's not on top. He's currently second with this game in hand. Well, in a group where everybody is struggling, sometimes you need a professional like Osborne to use his experience just to get through it. And that's exactly what he's doing. And a quick moment to say hello to everyone again back home. My name is Lewis Martin, and it's my delight to be joined again by the asset Paul Nicholson. It's our delight to have you join us at the Modus Live Lounge. We hope you're enjoying today's action. It's our pleasure to interact with you all on the Hi, live chat. By ways of introduction, I'm a media professional and darts enthusiast. It's my pleasure to be here. I've dipped my feet into darts myself. Played in the JDC Hi, once, got absolutely hammered. That's why you don't see me on the screen. Playing. <laughs> but I've played public darts like many of you have back home. I was president of my university dart society, a shout out to Exeter University Dart Society. So once again, it's my pleasure to join you all. We're Colin Osborne here. If you can take out this 156, here we go. He's got double 18 on the wire. He won't mind as long as he takes it next time. It's all about the legs. All about getting the two points. And if he gets them in this game at the 60. expense of Aaron, well, 14 points from 14 with a six-point buffer over third position. That's what it's all about. And Game that is the first there. notch on the ladder. He's just moseying along and playing Slag some decent Collins stuff. And Game if there's on. anybody in this group who knows how to get through a group without their best darts, it's probably Colin Osborne. Think back to the end of a previous series when he was in the final with Luke Littler. Dig a little deeper. Go into the early part of that night. He played poorly in his first game Nine in the group. Five. His second game, so much better. Squeezed his way through and at the expense of Steve West in the semi-finals. He would go to the championship game, but ultimately fell to one of the great players that have walked through this massive oak door at the start of the live lounge. You can't see it from there, but everybody who has walked through that door has got a ridiculous amount of ambition, including this guy still. 85. And the big question today is how can he continue his winning form from yesterday? Well, he's answered that pretty well so far. I think 61. it's fair to say that not a great deal's coming back from Aaron. Maybe this was a little bit too soon for Aaron. Maybe it was the right time and he's just getting the information One, that he needs to figure out where he's at. That might be it. The way that Aaron thinks, every single thing that happens, he will take it home, he will process it, and figure out how to progress from here. Colin, you but for me, this game is all about Colin. 
Well, here he is now trying to take out 76 to take an early two leg lead. And on tops. Game shot in the second. He pins it again. Colin Osborne. Well, folks, welcome to the couch of somewhat useless facts about Portsmouth first. because our friends in the social media department have told us something rather interesting about beanie babies. So sit back and relax, everyone, as we enthrall ye. 60. Portsmouth has a heavy link with beanie babies, apparently. Uh, they have the UK factory here in Portsmouth, only five minutes away from this venue. Funny that, isn't it? Portsmouth Football Club are the only sports club to have ever been sponsored by Beanie Babies. And you've got someone called Beanie in the building, albeit covered in canned goods. 90. That's Paul the Asset Nicholson spilling the beans. I don't spill beans, Lewis. I mop them up. Just like Mr. Osborne is mopping up this game. And he sets up something that we haven't seen for a couple of weeks. Well, what a day it would be to hit it as everyone struggled in the group. Colin Osborne here could be onto 60. something special. Colin, you require 100. He's got the 141 to hit a nine data. Treble 20. He hits it. Treble 19. So close. And you can see the smile on Aaron Beanie's face. That would have been. A really important nine data for Colin Osborne. You may think that they're all important, but if you think back, Colin got one in Southampton in our previous studio. 41. He could have just done the Colin double. 44. And I can think of only one person who's done that, and that's Mr. Heenahan. Double 10. That's a 3 0 lead, and everything is going Colin Osborne's way. It's like I always said, and I'm going to quote Linda Hamilton now. Well, no fate but what we make. Damaged. Essentially put, Colin Osborne is making his own fate right now. He's not putting anything to chance. This is all about him doing his job and booking 41. his ticket and not relying on anybody else doing favours for him. Well, Colin Osborne believes when he is on his game, he's as good as anybody. And with darts like that, it's hard to argue with him. 40. Yeah, that'll be one of his best legs of the week, a 12 data. Plant a few more of those in, Col, and it could be a very fruitful week. 58. One of the most seasoned players here. With some of the best statistics. Games played, games won, 60. high averages, nine daughters. He's been with us for the last few years. And I'm sure he'll be here for a few years to come. But another Saturday night beckons for him. 60. It's not that far away. 14 points. If he gets one more leg in this contest, and when is 14 points not enough in a Group C situation? Very, very rarely. Well, this game so far has been all about Colin Osborne, but just a word on Aaron Beanie. We saw him on that last throw, moving around with his arm, feeling a bit uncomfortable, perhaps. 80. It's his return to action after a little layoff. Paul, it's it's hard in a tournament situation when you've got to play so many games, especially here at the Moda Super Series. It's a tough schedule Four, in this two, Group one. C. Do you think the wear and tear is going to start counting on Aaron Beanie here? I think he's got to work up to the player he wants to be. Playing five games in a day when you're fully fit is not easy. 55. Playing five I games in a day when you're 35. not fully fit is even worse. This is something that Aaron's got to work on over the next six months or so. Just got to work up to being fully fit. And then 83. things will come to him. More accuracy, more energy, more focus. You just got to build it up. And this is something that Colin knows an awful lot about. So if you want a little bit more information, Aaron, 80. you might want to flick Colin a text. 52. Well, he's given himself a good chance to win this leg and get rid of that bagel. Double eight here to get one on the board. Game shot. And he does leg. it. Aaron Beanie. 
That's good. You don't serve beans with bagels anyway. Before gets our However, to first. Game on. it ensures that we still, after six games, have not got a 4-0, seeing that today has very hardly fought by all players. 28. Osborne showing no signs of exasperation at losing leg number four. Didn't play particularly well in that leg. Left himself at 127. 26. And the previous leg he took out in 12. So he just needs to figure it out right now because it seems as if he's lost his way. Albeit temporarily. 36. Well, Beanie may have beans on his shirt, but his campaign, would you say at this stage, is pretty much baked? Pretty much. 99. Apologies to the listeners back home for that horrendous one. I've heard a lot worse. 97. Mr. Deacon, are you listening? <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> There's no hiding. It's There's... war. <laughs> 100. On the hockey right now, the guns are out. Osborne is only six darts away from 14 points. And Mason Whitlock, 45. who has got Robert Thornton next, he's been asked an awful lot of questions today. I just wonder if he's up for them. He's going to have to beat Thornton next to stay with the top two, because 55. if he doesn't, he's running the risk of being out before the final two rounds. Osborne there, psyching himself up, giving himself a quite 100. hard tap on the head. Here he is trying to leave himself a handy finish. He'll love to wrap this one up at 4-1. He wants to leave 100. 81. That'll do. You just wonder if he's got six darts from 140. Aaron's going to try and trim this shot down to 100, but single 19 is not going to do it. Calling you a 140. This is to win the match. I had a 1-3-1 yesterday, which is actually harder than this shot. Take the ton. Oh, hey, you can't even get that. That was a Aaron bit of a lazy one from the wizard. It's a lot better than busting, but Aaron Beanie here gives himself a good chance. Single 16 leaves tops for him. 96. Just pulls it low. That might be that. Osborne does everything in his power. To leave tops in these situations. That's Game why Colin match. goes back to the Colin top of the Osborne. table. He's still undefeated after seven games. He's still not providing us with his vintage stuff. However, in that game, that was rather steady, wasn't it? 87 on the number, four out of seven on the doubles. And it just goes to show how good Colin Osborne can be because that looked like a C or D game from him. There's so much more in the tank. But it was still quite an impressive performance that keeps his undefeated streak alive. It's all over to Robert Thornton and Mason Whitlock when we come back. That game, with all due respect to Robert, is all about Mason.
Welcome back to the Live Lounge. This is going to be Whitlock versus Thornton. Sounds like a heavyweight clash, and in fact, it's a very important game for our Group C table. But as far as what we've seen today already, Mason Whitlock is having a pretty good day. He's won eight legs at the loss of three. So he has put himself in the shop window of trying to qualify through this group, but he cannot stop. He must make Robert Thornton pay. You can see that Robert is in fifth position in the table here. Whitlock in third. And if he can get another win at the start of this round of fixtures, he'll again tap Kieran Smith on the shoulder and say, you're not safe yet, mate. So let's get into this one. Game number seven. Whitlock undefeated today. The Thorn still waiting for his first win. However, he isn't 100%. Can he grind his way into this match with Whitlock Jr., I wonder? Whenever you see pain on the face of Thornton, my automatic reaction is, what else can he find? But is, it, is this just a bridge too far today? As we can now say that Thornton is not going to be in Saturday night for the very first time since coming to Portsmouth. Yeah, and hopefully he can just relax and... Fifth. Not yeah. forget about it. You can't forget about a physical injury, can you? But now he doesn't have that target anymore. It's just about going and throwing. 46. That's for Mason Whitlock. He certainly does have that target. And Kieran Smith is determined to make it as hard as possible. Any defeat for Whitlock, and it looks unlikely that he's going to make it. 136. We know that Aaron Beanie, Robert Thornton, <laughs> and Lloyd Walker won't. And, of course, Owen Bowden, who... Started in this group. 45. Not playing today. Walker in as a replacement. But it's going to be between Whitlock and Smith. And Colin Osborne is as good as there. 27. Before we get too deep into this one, on our social feeds, at MSS Darts on X, you can vote to see who the influencers play with in a couple of weeks. We just sent a tweet out, or should I say a post, I'm still adjusting to that. 96. Who would you like to see the darts referee paired up with? I think a lot of those people are going to say Ash Coleman, aren't they? Yeah, and if you're going to watch that event, it's 3pm, 28th of April, live here on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, the only place to watch it, unless you were lucky enough to get a ticket. 47. The eight influencers, eight professional dart players, and you have the chance to decide who plays with who. Voting now open on X. Robbie required 36. Is there such a thing as a dart player who's also an influencer? Game well, I suppose Ashley player. Coleman himself would Robert be one. Thornton. Who, this is a, this is a so like it's Mason the original trophy. meaning of Game the word influencer. Which dart player had the biggest influence on you? As in ever. Yeah. Bob Anderson. Bob Anderson. Bob Anderson. The limestone cowboy. Three time world master. 1988 world 100. champ. I was eight, nine years old watching him play, thinking, I want to be that cool someday. I didn't look that weird, Eric. I didn't look that weird, John Law. I really liked Jockey. But when I saw Bob for the first time, I thought, who is that? I want to be that good. 43. And that's why the first set of darts that I ever saved up for were a set of Bob Anderson unicorn darts. And my best friend, who still lives in Blythe, the Northumberland, 59. where I grew up, has still got them. And he's still pretty cool now, isn't he, Bob? Oh, yeah. Imagine what it's like stepping on the first tee of Fox Hills in Surrey, saying that you're going to play golf with Bob Anderson for the day. I was like a kid in a candy shop. For anyone who doesn't know, Bob Anderson once took a real horse on his walk on into the Circus Tavern, Mason which is not got the highest ceilings. This is the Whitlock route. Well, that wasn't part of the plan, was it, Mason? I think he was concerned he might have bust there. No score. Oh, he has now. Require 118. It's sort of quite 
pleasantly surprised when the referee Owen Binks told him he had double one left and now Robert Thornton might take full advantage. 80. Well, play it again, Mason. 110. Same route. Well, he's not going to bust it this time. Let's look on the bright side first. 32. I mean, requires 30. But what he's done is he's illustrated the peril of the route that he used before. And make no mistake, this 2 0 lead for Robert Thornton is harmful for Mason in his quest to get through this group. If he loses, he's only got two games left. Game on. And he's four points behind already. He must keep winning. Kieran Smith plays Colin Osborne in game nine. Smith wins that. That's it. It's all done. 44. And it would mean that two players that were in Group A at the start of the week will join Victor Tingstrom in the Saturday Night Spectacular. 92. I think it's lovely, you know, when you watch that interview with Mason on our YouTube channel and the interview with Simon as well, the, the importance of the family influence. It's not just people on social media, people who were on the stage when you were a kid. It's the family influence that took me when I was speaking to Simon. 180. And then if you transcribe that into the modern day, Mason will say that the biggest influence on him playing darts is his dad. I think that's a lovely thing. 45. Mason, you're recording 140. Robert Thornton's already done his quickfire questions on YouTube for us. And the biggest influence for him in darts was Jockey Wilson, 62. which I'm sure was for most Scottish people in the 1980s and 90s. How many Scottish dart players have been on top of the pops? 60. Mason, One. Require 80. And that was Jockey Wilson. Albeit because the producers at Top of the Pops thought he was Jackie Wilson. Double top for Mason. 40. Nine. hope for Robert's sake that the Mason, shooting pains Four. in his arm which is what I think they are, seem to be a little bit quieter at this stage. Game shot in the third leg. Mason takes the third Mason leg. Whitlock. He's back in the game now, but not happy with his level of performance. Four player gets Mason to throw first. Game on. Yeah, he really needs to keep winning, doesn't he, Mason Whitlock? <laughs> it is massively important with Kieran Smith doing that. He's waiting for a slip up from Smith. If Smith keeps winning as well, then that last game between Smith and Whitlock would be a dead rubber. However, Kieran 81. Smith plays Colin Osborne in his next game, so it is so crucial for Whitlock to win this match, to get back within two points, knowing that he could put himself level before the Whoa! end of the day, and the last match could be a straight shootout, and that kind of thing will certainly help. 180 shooting today has been really good. He's got himself six already. And it's not even the end of game three. Who does he think he is? Conan Whitehead? Oh, this is brilliant. 123. Every now and again, he treats us to a leg like this. And he proves that the game is there. 57. Mason, you require 50. If at this stage of his career, he's able to do these kind of things, it's very encouraging. Game shot because that is an 11 data to equalise a 2 2. Really confident, composed leg of then darts. Robert to throw first. From the apprentice, who certainly mastered that leg. One hundred and forty. Is it just me or are all young dart players getting taller? Owen Bates, 42. Jimmy Van Schee. Mason Whitlock, they are all very, very tall. There is one that is kind of littler. One. Who would that be? You're talking about Makuru. Okay. 
Height is not really a differential either. You look at some of the greatest players of all time, they've been quite diminutive. But we are seeing more tall players than ever before. 89. Must be putting something in the almond milk. <laughs> 60. Yeah, it's all the avocado, isn't it? You might be onto something there. Well, the encouraging sign here for Robert is that he doesn't look as uncomfortable. Maybe he's playing through the pain, but he's not showing it as much as he did earlier in the match. 100, or Robbie required 32. Thornton to lead. He's one of the short, successful darts players, isn't he, Robert himself? 24. Yeah, someone that Philip Douglas Taylor's got an awful lot of respect for. Another 180? Number seven? 100 and That's a settle for a two treble visit as Robert goes back for fours. Six. Oh no, he could pay for that. Mason, you require. What eight. a gift for Whitlock. He's going two tops. And he's got Gage them both. On the fifth leg. Mason Tried it yesterday Whitlock. and failed, but today is a very, very different day. And if you think that Mason's Simon Whitlock first. is the Gain only on. famous sporting Whitlock, think again. You obviously don't know much about gymnastics. And the great Max Whitlock. 85. Ever heard of him? I have, yeah. yeah. I can assure you it's no relation to the darting Whitlocks. Yeah, one of the best gymnasts of the last decade, Max Whitlock. 45. You wouldn't want to go and have an arm wrestle with him. Well, no doubt about who the biggest influence in Mason's life has been. And he is showing 58. to be a chip off the old block. Wouldn't be a bad nickname for him, that. Chip off the old block Whitlock. I'm sure that is a rhyme on its way. And let's face it, you and I have learned this week that songs can be written about dart players via AI very quickly. So has anybody got the capabilities of having a, a Mason Whitlock song made via AI in the same sort of ilk as Andrew Gilding from earlier in the week? That's a challenge. But Mason's challenge here is to keep winning matches and... 81. Keep the pressure on Kieran Smith. Go to the 18s. 56. Might only be 21, but he knows his numbers. He's closing in. He's really turned this around pretty well. Only one Ooh, game's gone 4 3 today. That was Osborne against Thornton in game three. That was a good battle where both players had the same average. 56. Robert McCoy, 110. Same sort of standard in this game, I would say. Double 18. 74. What's he going to do on 150? 150? Ah, you see? He didn't do it, do it now. This time, he did the right thing. There's a time and a place 90, for three bullseyes. Robert that was not it. Showing a bit of maturity as well as showing some good darts. This must go in. Game shot on the sixth flag. Bound for glory, that Robert one. Thornton. And 3-3 three, three takes us to the final leg decider, which Seven Robert, final leg, it's Robert to throw first. will hope to win Game to on. dent the hopes of Mason Whitlock. You don't see many players using the old flight protectors 45. these days. That little metallic piece that crowns the flight. But throughout Robert's career, he has always used them. 60. You can see that shiny bit at the top. Lots of different components to Robert's darts. In fact, he's got point, 100. barrel, stem, stem ring... Flight and flight protector. So he's got a six-piece thing going on. Whereas this young man... 100. Three. Point, barrel, and the rest of the stuff is bonded. Two 
22. Thornton trying to avoid scoring three there. Yeah, that stem and flight is one piece. Yeah, some people might think that points and barrels are one piece, but usually points can be removed. Not in every dart, but in the vast majority. Whoa! Yeah, some technologies do allow you to remove the points very quickly and very easily. That 180 looked fairly easy, but considering the previous visit to that, it's anything but. Well, th this is huge now for Mason Whitlock. Robert Thornton has Whitlock's destiny in his hands here. And suddenly Whitlock has gone from being in control of the contest to praying that Thornton makes a mess of 41. And even if he does, he might not be in a position to do anything 40. about it. He Wrong can't do anything about it. It's going to be one for tops. Go and there it is. Thornton gets a win. And it could Robert be one that Thornton. damages Whitlock's hopes. That is great news for Kieran Smith. And it also means that Colin Osborne is through. He is in two finals night on Saturday. Kieran Smith looks set to join him. If Smith wins his next game, he will be through or wins any game between now and the end of the day. Uh, before that, two players already out of the running, Lloyd Walker and Aaron Beanie will go head to head next. Welcome back. Time to see Aaron Beanie. And he's in his quest to get his first win of the day, but so is Lloyd Walker off the bench overnight and causing problems for his first two opponents, but not yielding points just yet, the man in purple, yellow, pink, and everything else by the looks of it. But the man who's got big beans on his shirt, still hungry, still has three games to go, might just walk away with more points by the end of the day. But what we do know about these two is that they're not going to qualify for Saturday night. So let's take a bit of a break from who's going to qualify. Let's revel in a neutral game of darts and talk with our fans in doing so. Uh -huh. Yeah, we will engage with the 
chat room during this match. But just on the players themselves, I think two players that, of course, will want to be invited back here, particularly Lloyd Walker, Four putting one. himself in the shop window. So he, he did say at the start of the day, didn't expect to get through, but he will approach each match with the same intensity Fifth, as somebody who was still trying to get through, won't he? Absolutely. It's like getting an audition and... I suppose if you look at it from this perspective, I know this is a somewhat hipster thing to say for a 44-year-old man, but if you got a role as an extra or a bit part on Baywatch in the 90s, 91. you'd still want to do your best, right? It's not going to get you a role in an Oliver Stone movie. But if you do your best, you just don't know who's watching. And this is the case for Lloyd Walker today. 60. If he puts in a great performance, gets himself a couple of wins... The people here at the Motor Super Series will be thinking, do you know what? He's got a great style. 57. He's young. He's vibrant. Talented. Why don't we give him a chance? That's what he's thinking. And he has played some decent stuff. One I'm starting hundred. to wonder if Aaron Beanie is starting to struggle with his pain after a couple of days. Remember, this is a return to playing darts for Beanie. Got the walking wounded in this group at times, haven't we? Oh, and I'll tell you what's wounded right now, that oh, stem. I don't often use the word thwack. I don't even think it's been used since 1960s Batman. But that stem, get it replaced, Aaron. It looks completely shot. 65. Even if it's holding the flight right now, if you nudge it, it's probably going to fall out. When you use plastic stems, you hit it with a point. Just replace it. 50. Lloyd, you require 60. 60 for Walker. Double top. Game shot. Found. The That's the start Lloyd that he Walker. wanted. Well, as we say, we would address some of your questions like it's in the live chat during players. some of these dead rubber games and we have one to the commentators poll from Kevin which player did or does have the best third dart so the killer third dart specifically James Wade it wasn't that one didn't end up in the board James Wade because he's the kind of person who would have an inferior average and still beat you when people have asked me this question in the past I use this example of why did Phil Taylor have bigger averages than most people when he was at his peak? Because he was taking out 13 and 14 daughters. One. Why does Wade still get a lot of wins in a massively impressive career with lower numbers? Because he tends to finish things in three darts. One. That's the reason. And one of the best finishers of all time, I'd say James Wade. Yeah, so if Taylor and Wade played a match and... Phil kept going out in 13 and Wade kept going out in 15. It'd go down to a last leg decider. Phil would have a much higher average, but Wade would have won as many legs. Exactly. Very, very well categorised. But great question. 56. Keep them coming. The chat is for you to enjoy on YouTube. Just keep it sensible and clean and no spoilers, please. And, of course, when the action's finished, there's plenty of other content for you to watch. So make sure you are subscribed, along with 36,000 people who have done that already. You know how we were saying earlier that Aaron's got beans on his shirt? Well, there's a really interesting shirt design from Lloyd. It looks like he's got blancmange on the front of it. Probably doesn't even know what blancmange is. That was a really bad day at school when that was on dessert. 55. Lloyd, you require 160. 60. He's definitely got potential, this lad. Throws a lovely smooth dart. 125. And every now and again, he's just showing what is possible with that upright angle of attack, that smooth throw, and obviously the amount of desire he was showing Lloyd, in his interview with Lewis earlier. Double 16. I like that shuffle as well. Aaron, you're Just opening 80. up that bed a bit with that slightly longer dart that he uses. Two darts at double ten. Seventy. Just struggling a lot. 
Oh, he's in a, a in most departments today. Much better yesterday we saw from Aaron Beanie. And I think he would have learned a lot about where he is over the last couple of days. It is often a, an experience that will give Aaron you a good indication as a darts player as to where your game is at. Aaron Beanie in particular would have been coming here to try and discover that. Can he find double five? Third dart. Five. No. Over adjusted. Require four. This is a tricky shot if he blocks it with dart one. Be aggressive. Game shot Very second. well done. 2 0 Lloyd Walker. Walker. We haven't got a great deal of Walkers in darts, have we? Apart from Jim, of well, course. Lloyd to throw first. Fabulous guy from Scotland. Game on. Former firefighter. Currently works with Scott Williams, Josh Rock. And Rob Cross. He's sort of crossed the floor, hasn't he? Gone from being a dart player himself to yeah, working not. on the management side. Yeah, Jim, a lovely guy. Well, come on, let's get into the controversy then, Paul. Kevin asks, what did you make of Michael Van Gogh's comments last night about Luke Littler's rubbish performance? Now, he did 30. not say rubbish, but we can't say what he did say. But he also said that he was, inverted commas, rubbish as well. They're just having banter between each other. In the practice room, they get on great. Anything on social media is blown up to the size of Richard Branson's air balloon. Let's face facts. When it comes to being in the Premier League practice room, you've got Michael Smith, you've got Michael Van Gerwen, you've got Littler, and you've got Humphreys and Wright and Price. They all get on fine. They all want to take points off each other. And Michael Van Gerwen has never been shy in saying exactly what's on his mind just to fluff his own confidence 60. and to maybe bring someone down just the tiniest little percentage point. I didn't see it as that disrespectful. Do you think Little like, cares? He doesn't. I, I do think it's a really clever ploy, actually, when a player does 93. that. When they win and they say, well, I played rubbish, because you're kind of just belittling everybody else who they might have thought they played all right. Phil Taylor did it for years. Do you ha have any idea how many times he called someone a good little player? 82. Oh, you record 124. He said it about Wayne Jones 25 years, 25 years after he made the World Masters final. <laughs> Cracking little player. 56. Lloyd Walker is proving to be that here. On the cusp of a 3-0 lead and ready to pick up his first win at the Moda Super Series. 100. I wonder if his middle name's oh, Murray. 68. Or Dez. I can get on board with that. Double 16, 36. not found. I thought you'd like that one being an owl. Treble 19 for Beanie. And the ball. 64. Not a bad try from Aaron. You require 32. 3 0 beckons. Starting to get comfortable up there, isn't he? He's on the third leg. Showing North a little Walker. bit more. Taking advantage of Aaron, who is struggling a little bit today. Game on. You said one or two controversial things in your time. I did want to ask you, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. Were they all spur of the moment or were they premeditated? 45. Everything was spur of the moment. Nothing was rehearsed. I was genuinely... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you about the Dave Clark interview in 45. 2011 at the match play because I was... I was going into that tournament and I was annoyed... Because when I beat Phil at the UK Open in 2011, his response to that was to go to the papers 80. and to call me disrespectful. Okay, fair enough. I wasn't given a right to reply by the Daily Mirror. That annoyed me. And then when I went to the match play and I beat Osborne, 85. my first ever match play win, all they wanted to do was talk about Taylor. And I thought, how on earth do I stop this where we can talk about where what I'm doing. And I said, 100. the situation annoyed me. If he plays me again, I want to put it to bed. That's what it was all about. I was genuinely peed off 40. in that moment with Dave Clark, but he was doing his job for Sky. And even now, people still reference it. Yeah, and it made more and more headlines. Yeah, well played. I've got another question for you here that's 28. interesting. Maybe because of some of the conversations you've had on comms in recent weeks. Uh, Gray asks, is Mr. Nicholson thinking of opening up a chain of restaurants? 94. I wouldn't say no. My brother is a very good chef. That would be an ambition one day, to have a little restaurant with my brother. 
one of, one, a good friend of mine has restaurant group, Adam what, Handling. What would you call it? It's some dart steam name. I know that Steve Brown's got Bar 501, for example. I think Gedwin Price has got Cafe hey, 501, hasn't he? Aaron he has indeed, yeah. Big Fish Cafe. Well, it is Friday. By the way, one more thing on that 98. 2011 newspaper thing. I still have the newspaper. I have the proof. It hasn't been lost. 56. Aaron, it requires 72. 72 then for Aaron Beanie to avoid losing this match. 4-0. Oh, well, this could get very, very messy. But Game that is a superb Aaron shot, Beanie. particularly under the pressure that he's facing. The prospect of a whitewash defeat to find double three. Beanie gets Lloyd to Beanie throw first. avoids Game. that prospect, but Walker now has the darts to win the match. I know he's been struggling today, but he hasn't been bageled. He has fought valiantly for every leg. Sixty-four. Do you know the name of Gary and Phil Neville's father? You know, it's Neville Neville, isn't it? Fifty-eight. It is, yeah. Imagine if Mr. Walker was the offspring of... Our friend Colin, he'd be Lloyd Lloyd. 100. I think this is where your integrity really kicks in. There's not a great deal at stake. 60. I'll be fascinated to see what Aaron Beanie does from here on out. I wonder if he's going to use the amateur dart circuit in the southeast of England to try and 60. fire things up over the next six to nine months. I, I believe that that would be the right thing to do. Get yourself playing against some good players for the next few months and figure out where your game is going. 100. That's exactly what Lloyd's doing in this region. And we know how strong... Hampshire is when it comes to the ADC. Wiltshire, Dorset, neighbouring Sussex. The ADC is everywhere in England and throughout the UK. 81. The Go chances are there. Just like this 134. Got to go downstairs now, really. Trim the four off the end at worst. 44. Which is exactly what he does. 96. Stay straight, but can't find the way to dart. 56. Same sort of 90. prospect here for Lloyd. Stay straight, get a shot at the ball. Will be some way to earn his first win. 45. Yeah, it was some way Aaron away 40. from that target. The second time he's gestured like that. As to the distance between his dart and the double in this match. Does the game continue? It's a really tough shot, this, but he's already done this once today. Ten. Can't do it this time. Lloyd, you require 45. Be a big moment, this, for Lloyd Walker in his hometown. He's been waiting for this opportunity at the Motor Super Series. And I think that all rushed into his arm for the last couple of darts. 30. Cannot cross the line. Aaron, you require 30. Double 15. Got to go for it this time. No score. Three darts, a double 16 to win your first match on this stage. Lord, you require 32. Once it, you can tell. Game and there it is. Walker wins for the first time at the Lloyd Motor Super Walker. Series. Lloyd Walker from Portsmouth wins on home turf. A 4-1 success against Aaron Beanie, who has struggled today. That shoulder injury really causing him trouble. Walker, it wasn't pretty. It started to kind of fall apart as he approached the winning line, but maybe now he's got a win. We can see the best of him. Success for Lloyd Walker. For the first time, coming up next, a big match 
at the top of the table, the two players who look destined to be going through and all could be solved after that game as Colin Osborne takes on Kieran Smith. Well, the Motor Super Series Group C last week went right down to the death. But at halfway through the second day of play this week, it could all be over and will be if Kieran Smith can be the first player in this group to get the better of Colin Osborne. If Smith beats the Wizard, he will join him on 14 points and will join him at finals night. Osborne is already there. Robert Rose Thornton's recent Colin win against Mason Whitlock Game confirmed on. that Osborne will return to the Saturday show. And Smith, who's turned his week around incredibly, will join him if he wins this or any other match today. Whoa, he might not even need to win another match, of course, because Mason Whitlock's going to play Osborne in his next game. And if Osborne wins that one, he could put Smith through. 60. And in his last match, Paul, he threatened a, a nine-dart finish. Didn't quite make it happen. Can he do that now? Not quite. However, I think there's another motivator here for Colin. 21. He wants to be someone who gets 20 points from 20. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's only happened three times. James Wilson did it recently, didn't he? Richard North's done it. Who was the other? Fifty-five. I do. I think you're right. Richard North, James Wilson. I know that Kevin Burness did it in Southampton, but that doesn't count. That's not here. Forty-four. If I start saying that Southampton's in Portsmouth, I'm really going down a slippery slope. Osborne looking to add his name to that list, regardless. One hundred and we're talking about someone in Osborne who has. Equally, the best Group A record in our history. He's got 28 points in a Group 59. A campaign. Colin, you've got 85. 85 points required here to win the opening leg against Smith, who's not in finishing range, which may inform Osborne's decision. 
game show on the well, first. That was a little unorthodox, Colin, but it worked well for Colin. Second leg, it's Kieran to throw first. I do get the feeling that Colin likes playing against Kieran here this week. 58. He's beaten him 4-2 twice and 4-1 twice. Looking to do him five times in a row ahead of possibly... 78. Possibly playing him again on Saturday night. Now, if you beat someone six times in a week, I'd say you've got the wood on them. 96. Yeah, if you've got a, another invite to the Super Series, you'd be looking, thinking, please, please don't put him in my week. <laughs> 180. Yeah, Colin is putting the hammer down right now. And this is good news for Whitlock, who is praying that Osborne is going to win this one by a margin. Speaking of which, there was a lot on social media last night about how Luke Humphreys has not beaten Luke Littler since the World Championship final. But we had a little oh, chat off the air, didn't we, about you can lose all those Premier League games and maybe a couple of Pro Tour games, but it'll all be forgotten if they play in the final of the Premier League and Humphreys wins. Yeah, exactly. 96. There are games and then there are matches. This is a big match for Smith, but not for Osborne. And look, at, I think we're looking at the two players that are going through. I 60. can't see really any other outcome from this point, Paul. Yeah, I'm with you there. If Whitlock can find a way through, it will surely be because Mr. 81. Smith has Number failed. 140. Oh, he's going the sexy way. 105. He's perturbed by his own 70. tungsten. Having a little annoyance with himself. I'm 54. told that it is only Richard North and James Wilson that have 35. gone through the, the full Group C campaign undefeated. Well, in that regard, Colin, keep doing what you're doing. He could be in for a little slice of Group C heaven. Kieran requires 16. Fortunate man to be coming back. He's found shots like this the last couple of days. But shots like that? You might need a crane for this. Game oh, my word. Second leg. Talk Kieran about Smith. a flick on at the front post and in the back of the net. That's exactly what just happened. Feel like it's Collins to throw first. Smith looking to end that perfect run. Nice little subplot to a fairly straightforward 60. story in Group C this week. Now, I'm not going to say that that was anything to do with a Chelsea player, but that last dart was the equivalent of James Ward-Prowse scoring from a corner, which actually happened last week. For those unaware of Kieran Smith's starting journey, he's... Decent player from Gloucestershire. Made it through an ADC qualifier to get here and struggled early in the week. Lost his first 12 matches before a lucky 13th game win against Robert Thornton on Wednesday. Started to turn things around for Kieran. Now, the last two days, he's got a very, very positive return, winning six out of seven games in Group C. Yeah, not bad at all. I'd be really interested to hear... 57. And we probably won't hear this through our chat window, but our American viewers trying to say Gloucestershire. It would be more along the lines of 60. Gloucestershire. Because <laughs> let's face it, English is weird. And that is a bit of social media fun that we could do when we have some overseas players. I mean, even just Irish names always goes down well. Like Neve and Queever and... We've got a darting ether, haven't we? We do. Colin Osborne looking to produce some more magic. On tops. Game shot. Wizardry third leg. from Osborne. Colin Osborne. The Shanghai shot completed a 2 1 lead as he bids to carry on that we'll perfect record. First. Plenty of chat about Kieran Smith, people taking to him. Plenty of nice words for you as well, Paul. I'm not going to read them all out. One. I mean, they're awesome. 
they're, they're sort of backhanded compliments. We've got one guy saying... But they're the ones I love. He's going to be honest with you. This is Aaron. Good. When all that stuff went on with Phil Taylor and the media blew it up, he was one of those people who didn't like you. But since you've been on comms, he admits he was totally wrong and you 55. are a diamond geezer. Oh, that's very nice of you to say. Have a nice weekend, Aaron. Thanks for your feedback. Very much appreciated. 60. Don't believe everything you read in the media. Or see. That's why it's so much of a privilege to have the microphone here at the Motor Super Series because we can show who we are. We can paint these players in the right light. And, and you can just sit and enjoy. Yeah, and you've got a direct line straight through to the comms box. We're going to have to get ourselves a red phone in here and make it like Batman. We haven't had Batman here yet, have we? The Dark Knight. 125. I'm robbing that. We've had some jokers in the past, haven't we? Here in require 81. We were talking about John O'Shea last night, weren't we? Got one next week, yep. John O'Shea. Why so serious? The bullseye. Good leave. Calling in McCoy, 151. He's not going to take the 151. So Kieran might have to find one of those wonderful flick on darts again if he blocks the 32 bed. 55. If in doubt, just get it first time. Don't leave Colin on 96, whatever you do. Not really a blocker. And there you go. There's the proof that it wasn't. A reminder, if Kieran Smith goes on to win this match, then both he and Colin Osborne will be through. Osborne already in finals night, along with Victor Tingstrom, the Swedish star who won Group A. And 59. whoever gets through from Group B will complete the field. It's looking like Conan Whited and Bradley Brooks have excellent chances. They're both on six points. Pete Burgoyne has four. Yeah. David Wazowski and Corne Gronovel both on two. And the action resumes this evening from 10 p.m. Live here on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. I'll tell you who's relieved Eight. over the last couple of days that Victor Tingstrom has not been playing darts on the stage. That's the boards. Some of those bounce outs he had. King of the violent bounce out. 100. Almost spiked himself with his own dart. I tell you what, Smith might be making his move here. 180 followed by a ton. As he bids to break. 100. Osborne suddenly under threat, under pressure. Just perish the thought of finishing bottom in Group A with one win from 15. And maybe winning Group C. And he could go from only winning one game to only losing one game. 66. He's starting to play like a battery this week. Gone from super negative to super positive. Double 18. That's double 16. Great miss. That's what you'd hear down the pub anyway. Well, it's for a dozen dart like this. Colin Osborne. Colin, you require 150. Certainly has this in his wheelhouse. There's only one way to get it. Just glided over. Just ran out of room. 100. Bit too much tomato sauce on that palm, or. Kieran, you require 32. So double 16 for Smith for 3 2. And the break advantage. There it is. And now he's got a real opportunity. Smith leads the match and he's serving to be the first to, to beat the wizard. There's not many times Game in on. this group, with all due respect to everybody who's played in it, that the averages have been decent to impressive. Because Osborne's averaging 91 in this game and he's losing. 85 for Kieran. This has been effective. All the metrics tell you that Osborne should be winning. 55. But he's not. It's almost like a James Wade performance. 
which we were talking about earlier. Let that last dart go really quickly there. Stay in your rhythm. Don't afford yourself to lose patience at this point. 60. He definitely wants this, doesn't he? We had a little chat with him yesterday and he was very no, positive about what happened on Thursday, but you do get the feeling now that he wants more. Now that he's got a taste of winning. 140. Well, someone's going to taste defeat for the first time today in this match. Just a question of who it's going to be. 65. I really do wonder what Mason Whitlock is thinking right now. He might be thinking, you know what? I'm not sure I can get out of this jam. 140. Again, I think it would have been a bonus on debut. But I think having seen the group, he would have been aware pretty quickly that there was an opportunity. That opportunity might be about to go. This finish won't go. So Osborne 60. still in with a shout. Well, you require 106. Remaining unbeaten. But he may need to take this out. Depends where the first start is. Now he'll move to 18s. 90. 3 well-thrown shots. Kieran, you require but a chance 56. for Kieran Smith to qualify and to take Colin with him. That is a real, real mess. Kieran Smith with that moment in front of him. Ten. That is, oh, he can't believe it. I can't believe Colin it. Colin Osborne can't 16. believe his look. I think Colin might have cast a spell on him. Didn't get a dart Game from 56. Colin, Colin Osborne. Osborne manages to win the leg. Seven from five Mason leg Whitlock breathes again. Against. Game on. And Kieran Smith, look at him. He cannot believe what's just happened. He needs to banish that thought from his mind. Oh, absolutely. Here's the thing about that visit. That might be living rent-free in his brain for the next couple of hours. If Os Osborne goes on to win this, he will remain undefeated and go to eight wins from eight in this group. But just think about if you're slightly weak in character and mind, those missed singles, of which there were three, might infect the rest of his week. No, We've seen it before. Six. People have one bad turn or one bad leg, and all of a sudden, the rest of their week is completely shot. Right now, he wants Colin Osborne to be 59. beaten, but if he loses to Osborne, he'll want Osborne to remain unbeaten because he plays Mason Whitlock in two games' time. We could still go to the last game between Smith and Whitlock. We said at the top of the show, Chris, that if that happens just like it did last week, we're in for a bit of a rocky ride. 45. He's gone, hasn't he? He's totally gone. G-A-W-N. Gone. And Osborne wants to do it in style. <laughs> well, Osborne... I think what he said was fudge. 71. That shows how desperate he was to take out such a flamboyant finish to win the match because he's going to win the match, isn't he? 70. He's going to win the group. He may even win it without losing a match, but he wants to do special things. All he needs is tops. All he needs is double ten. Hasn't found 44. it, but Kieran Smith still needs a miracle here. I think we're going to start cracking into all you need is love there, Miff. That would have been something. I would have got me trumpet out. 44. Colin, you require 10. Get the trumpets out. I think Colin Osborne's about to qualify. Good guide. Just kiss it off the barrel. Or maybe not. He didn't like the guide. What do I know? Yeah, he knows better. And Osborne does find Colin the double Osborne. to win the match, and he remains unbeaten. 4-3.
over Kieran Smith, who's wait to join him, just goes on a little longer, and Mason Whitlock's hope continues at least a little longer as well. Lloyd Walker is going to take on Robert Thornton, and then Osborne will meet Whitlock. We will know whether this story has a little bit more to run or whether it will be all over in a couple of games' time. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Colin Osborne has been confirmed as the main man in Group C. He's already through to finals night. Kieran Smith looks set to join him, but that defeat to Osborne in the previous match means he will have to wait to see if Mason Whitlock can be the first to defeat Osborne. He plays in the next game and can stay in the hunt if he wins that one. Before it, Robert Thornton and Lloyd Walker will do battle. Walker, a replacement for Owen Bowden, who withdrew yesterday. I'm now joined by Lewis Martin for comms on this one. Lewis, what have you made of Lloyd Walker on his on his debut? He got the call late, didn't have any preparation time at all. Have you been suitably impressed with what he's done so far? Well, he looks natural on camera. I think you would all agree. There was a smashing 180 earlier on where he pointed right down the lens. We love to see that. He would love to join Robert Thornton on four Let's points Lloyd to throw first. by winning today. Game on! I spoke to him before today's action kicked off. And he seemed relaxed. He wanted to be the disruptor. He wants to play these big names. Robert oh, Thornton is a name that we all know. Lloyd probably would have grown up watching Thornton on TV. So what a special opportunity it is here to showcase his skills and play against the man that is the Thorn. Yeah, no lesser three-time... Major winner, world master, UK Open champion, world Grand Prix winner. And for Lloyd Walker, I'm sure it is a bit of a pinch me moment to share the stage with someone of such stature. 40. Just to remind everybody, Colin Osborne is safely through. Kieran Smith looks set to join him. Mason Whitlock takes on Osborne in the next game. And it could all be sealed if Osborne 
keeps up his unbeaten run. And the word Thornton here, he's out. Unfortunately for him, it's the first time in 12 he's not made a no, finals night. How do you think he reacts to that one, Chris? Yeah, it's a difficult one. He's obviously played with injury, so I think he'll be able to sort of take it and put it down to that. But still, he's a proud man, isn't he? A very proud darts player. And I would like to not have that record. But there is a, a positive to this. And he won't feel like it right now. But every time he gets here, he gets asked the question. You've been to finals like every time and you have never won. Well, at least that narrative ends. It's not doesn't end the way he would have wanted it to. But it's a different story 46. now, isn't it? Robert, Robert McCoy, 130. Lloyd there, just missing the double 16 to go one up. Robert Thornton here, looking for a 130. Yeah, all he needed to do was stay straight. And would have had a dart 90. at the bullseye to win that leg. Instead, Lloyd he tees up tops. 16. And Lloyd Walker will return for double eight to land a leg off a legend. And, and the local the lad first, does it. He is one up Lord on Robert Lord. Thornton. It's a good leg to settle so in. The first Robert leg, of course. Robert Thornton here going to throw first in this one. He's someone who doesn't quit. He doesn't have quit in him. We know that he's I been experiencing one. this pain. But no quit. What testament is that to the character, do you think, Chris? He's forever been 60. one of the most defiant darters on tour. Really tenacious character, Robert Thornton. And as we've spoken about, myself and Paul Nicholson, 59. all of those tournament wins really were against the odds. Just goes to show. He just liked the tag of underdog, and he was a second favourite for this group, Robert Thornton. And maybe when he comes back next time, he won't be such a big favourite, and it might be something that suits him. 60. Well, it's a big one for Lloyd Walker, his first time at the Moda Super 100. Series. We've seen the Moda Super Series provide opportunities to all sorts of darts players up and down the country. A chance to break on the scene. Fair I know that he said to me that this is his chance to get invited back, not just to disrupt this group, but to prove that he's worthy. Worthy of being on the big stage. But Whoa, Robin Thornton, he's used to that big stage and he's used to whacking in 180s. There's another to leave him on 81. He'll be a lot happier with that. 90. Robert, you require 81. Starting on the 19s, of course. And he leaves himself the double, 16. 65. Doesn't quite hit it, but with Lloyd Walker quite a way back, he'll fancy himself to take out double eight next throw. Yeah, not an area that he 64. goes for Robert often, Robert Thornton. 16. Very much a double top merchant. That one is too high and wide, Game but he's on the money leg. with dart Thornton. number two. So the Thorn squares things off against Lloyd Walker here. So like it's Lloyd to throw first. And one thing I want to flag is when you are playing a big name, I've had experience of this in local competitions. 30 People now. who have played on big stages such as the Lakeside play a lot at local level. When you play against them, you lose a leg to them, even if you are playing well and, and perhaps looking like you might run away with a match after a first leg. When they win a leg, it's not just the dart player you're playing, it's the name you're playing. 100. So it doesn't look like so far Lloyd Walker has been startled by any of the occasion. You must have that feeling today 60. yourself, Lewis, commentating with a legend in the commentary box, like me. I saw exactly where that was going. <laughs> you surely are an asset to the world of darts. 140. Now, Paul Nicholson, the real legend of the three of us, will be back in the box for the next couple of games. 95. Now Lloyd Walker, do like his throwing style. Always much easier on the eye, isn't it? That quick sling of a style. 100. Lloyd, you require 87. So 87. Treble 17 will be the first target. Now double 18. 
That becomes double down. Has a little glance at Thornton's score. Surely he's going to go for it. He wouldn't Getting dare not, but he finds it. Lloyd and Lord. Lloyd leads 2-1. Well, player gets Roberts to throw first. Game on. Another factor at play here is that Lloyd's had a Lloyd Walker's had a significantly shorter week than Robert Thornton. Of course, we've spoken about the physical perspective, but also from the mental perspective. Fifty-eight. It's interesting to see whether the freshness that he has in his mind at this tournament is going to be a factor. Again, is there's no real pressure for him. He came in on zero points. 135. So we see him play with that freedom. I mean, he's got a lovely throw, as we can see here. Smooth, rhythmic. 58. Yeah, Robert Thornton, that is a very well-known style. By no means slow. Just that little aim 64. and then he gets on with it. But that is just one quick movement, isn't it, from Lloyd Walker. Very effective as well on that occasion. The local lad. And if you are in the local area here in Portsmouth, do try and come along on Saturday night. Tickets are available. All you've got to do is scan that QR code. It'll take you straight through to the booking page on dartshop.tv. It's only £2 for the booking fee, and you will not be disappointed. Value for money. Just check out the story of last Saturday night on our YouTube channel, and you'll want to be here. It was an exceptional evening, and it is a, a unique darting atmosphere that I know many people around the country, and indeed even further beyond than that, Whoa, want to tick off their bucket list. There's Robert Thornton. Ticks the 180 off in this game. Well, this would have been quite something, but all he can do now is set up and put pressure on Thornton. 124. And that he does, leading tops. But Ron Thornton here, we expect him to lead top. He's so reliable on tops. Can he hit it with his third dart? Game shot of the course he can. Robert Thornton. Was it ever in doubt? You can see he's still struggling with the injury, but fair play to Robert Thornton. Since the point he's been out, actually, he's started to play a little bit better. Won that match against Mason Whitlock that really 100. effectively ruled Whitlock out of the race, although it's not quite over yet, as we've been talking about. But again, he's given a good game to to Lloyd Walker. He's, he's averaging just shy of 90 now with a severely injured right arm. That's a good performance. You see, much, averages worse than not on the professional tour. 121. Perfect first start. 120. He just brushed off those darts and was going to be in the treble one. So it's not a huge loss that for Robert Thornton. 180. And there we see it again. The stagecraft. He loves it up here leaving himself on a ton. Yeah, I think there are a few really good players in this area that have sort of been waiting for this opportunity and he's going to embrace it. Went for treble 16 with his second dart there. It kind of makes sense with Thornton not on a finish. And the recovery is excellent there from Lloyd Walker. So as quick as lightning, he gets himself down to a double after a dozen darts. 59. Lloyd requires 16. Now double eight. He's gone into the 11. Now this is not easy. The big number when you're close up on the camera looks massive, which he's hit. The double two didn't quite hit. But in real life, if you've ever, if you've not stood across from a dartboard, it's a lot smaller in real life. And that's showcased again by Thornton missing the segment. Players will tell you it seems to shrink in big moments. Lloyd, you require and now two. Lloyd Walker wants the smallest number that you can finish on. Brilliant Aim dart. Expertly Lloyd executed. Walker. And Lloyd Walker now is one leg away from what will be a very, very Sigler memorable victory for him. First. Game on. How many people 
who were going about their business yesterday could have found themselves in this situation. It is the stuff of fairy tales, isn't it? And he might be able to go home and say, I beat Robert Thornton on stage in front of the cameras. 59. There's frustration drifting into that five there. 26. And into the one. Unfortunate for him on that throw, but it's important for him to keep his composure. 135. 45. Just tailed off a little bit Robert Thornton towards the end of this game and Lloyd Walker might be able to take advantage. 140. Yeah, Lloyd's slightly behind on the averages here. He's averaging 82.6, whereas Thornton's averaging 88. 100. Lloyd, you require 167. And he leaves 167 here, which is a sign of a good counter to leave a number and avoid a bogey number. But he won't be too happy with those two single fives. 27. This is a chance now for Thornton to get back in this game. He won't want to give up on it. He doesn't give up. He's still here. He's hurting. But he can hit a 140, put a bit of pressure on with a 105. Not the best last start for Lloyd Walker there. Even if Thornton doesn't take this out, it's going to be awkward for Walker. 53. Yeah, the big question is, if he hits that treble 20 with the first start, does he go down to double 19? Let's see. He's gone straight at it. It's confident. We like to see that. 60. Just short. He leaves himself tops. Of course he does. We're talking about Robert Thornton. He's going to hit it every time. Robert Thornton. And he has hit it to force a last leg decider for his second successive match. Seven from final leg. Lost 4-1 in his first. opener to Colin Game Osborne and suffered the same scoreline in defeat to Kieran Smith. But since then, a 4-3 win against Mason Whitlock. And now he is in a last leg shootout with Lloyd Walker. He has found something, Robert Thornton, in the last hour or so. Yeah, there's grit, there's determination. This is why he is a two-time world senior champion. 43. Well, Lewis alongside me mentioned it. There is no quit in this man. And he started off the last leg perfectly and suddenly all the pressure is on his opponent. Come on, Lloyd, what are you made of? He's made of 180s. 180. First to a finish, despite the fact that Thornton kicked off this leg with a fabulous opening salvo. 180. Lloyd, it's a feast of 180s here at the Moda Super Series. Robert Thornton here. Is he going to leave that tops again? Is he going to go for the single four? Of course he is. To win the game on double 10. 34. Chance goes begging, which means an opportunity Lord, for his opponent. 80. Come on, tops, tops. Well, that would be bold. Goes for the treble. Sensible stuff. 20. Four tops to get a memorable win. 60. Well, don't shake your head in the background, Robert Thornton. He hasn't hit it yet. This is your chance now. Game and he does it. He battles Robert through the pain. Thornton. He does not quit. A word for Lloyd Walker, of course. It's his big day here on last minute notice. But he's put on a great performance against Robert Thornton, the fawn. Lightning Walker. He'll want to be back. But Thornton there, 88.88. The average is pretty similar, actually. But the 180 stats, we love to see those at the Motor Super Series. Three to Robert Thornton, two to Lloyd Walker. The checkouts there in Robert Thornton's um, favour. Brutal on tops, as we like to see. Next up, 
We've got Mason Whitlock facing the winner of the group, Colin Osborne. You're a wizard, Whitlock. Nope, he's the apprentice. Colin Osborne is the wizard. And if he wins this one, he takes Smith through. That's Kieran Smith. And tops for group. He's had a happy day. He's been smiling up to the comms box in warm-up. Looking relaxed, looking happy. It's vintage Osborne. But Mason here will want to... Keep proving those glimmer of star quality moments that he's Mason showing. To throw first. Big finishes Game and on. pretty good on the doubles. My name is Lewis Martin. I'm joined now by Paul the Asset Nicholson. Paul, what's the thing to look out for in this game? 96. I think you're right with the doubles. Mason is somewhat ruining the fact that he lost out to Robert Thornton in Game 7 and he has been backed into a corner here. 85. By virtue of that loss, it means that if he loses to Colin in this match, his dream of making Saturday night on debut is over. Oh, and we've got a blame 180 from Mason. I'm loving that, by the way. Open your shoulders, young'un. Open your shoulders. What's absolutely hilarious... Oh, I thought he was going to give it back then. I had to pause for a moment. But Whitlock, Mason there, he teased that to me before game play started today. 55. He's just showing a little bit of flamboyance and there's nothing wrong with that. It might just take the pressure away. A no look 180, a 164 check out. A very decent showing on his debut. And he's on for a 170. I wouldn't have put that past him. But I would put 166 in three past Colin. Yeah, some dodgy maths in order to take that one out course a bogey number 120 that'll do 87. Whitlock if he wants the first leg might have to take 87 
And it's the ball that comes calling. 62. Colin, you're required 40. Well, Colin here leaves himself tops. He'll want to continue that winning run today. Oh, he wants to win this group with 20 points. Of that, there is no doubt. He wants to be joining that club Game of people who have gone there. through a group without Colin a loss. Also. As far as the doubles are concerned today, they Seven do tell us a bit of a story. Game on. Mason Whitlock has had 10 darts at a double at most in a match and has scored at least Nine three hits. Five. For the day, 11 hits in total out of 26. That is really, really good coming into this match. And when he coupled that with what he did yesterday, I think we have found a strength in his game. And especially on a stage under lights, under pressure. If he can do that, we may just have a talent. As Hampshire strikes again. Because they've given us Lloyd Walker today. 43. They've given us a whole stream of players over the last four or five years. Or should I say, if you go a little bit further back, maybe the last 40 years. Something about this region of England that gives us talented dart players and they are continuing to do so. Well, looping back to Colin Osborne, 60. saying about him wanting to finish this groove on 20 points, we speak a lot about momentum in sport. Paul Nicholson, what does momentum mean in no, darts? It's Surely it's everything. It's about confidence. You start with a win in a setting like this you've got more confidence of winning the next game, no matter who it's against. If you lose, you've got more of a bollard in getting the win in your next match. Some people who are famously within our sport do not believe in momentum. That's their proclivity. However, I believe in the momentum of confidence, which is what this game is all about. 68. Well, he's confident. Does that mean he can take out the big fish? Not quite. 43. It was actually Rod Studd that came up with the big fish. He invented the vernacular for it. So just a little hat tip to Rod Studd. 95. And it was Paul Hinks that came up with 127 in game. And there's a lovely interview with Paul on our YouTube channel. Game there you go. 2-0 Osborne Colin with a 1-2-7. And he's been dipping his bread... In finishes of that ilk for the last couple of days, brilliantly. 120 in his last game, a 1-3-1 yesterday, a 1-2-7 there. And he's two legs away from taking Mason Whitlock and putting him into the wizard's hat of obscurity. Well, you can see him smiling there, and that's what the sport is all about. It's about enjoying yourself, and the darts, the good darts, seem to follow that. When you see a player with a smile on their face, often... The performance follows. 100. He's got a great story, has Colin. He's 49. Lived all over the UK, played all over the UK, had his ups and downs. We were talking earlier about 57. Which personality at the Super Series? would warrant a really good documentary. Look no further. We're talking about a player that was top 10 in the world, highly regarded as maybe one of the best players on the planet around 2009. Still is one of the Super Series heavyweights now. 95. But in between the two, that's the bit that I'd want to learn about. The sports psychology, the constant rebuilding of the throat. The resilience 24. to stay within the sport instead of quitting. The having to go back to work instead of being a pro. I'd want to know that story. And I implore 41. the Motor Super Series to write that story with Colin in the next year. I think that would be wonderful to watch. And he would be very open-minded to 60. that. Mason, but his story is so far from finished. He's proving this week... He's got a long way to go, but we're talking about a 150 here. 
<laughs> of course he went for it. The yeah. smile on his face shows you all 33. you need to know. Temptation. Thou shalt not give in to temptation. Well, he just takes that statement and burns it. Maybe the 11th commandment is, thou shalt go for three bulls. 100. I see you have a 170. Oh, he loves the bullseye, doesn't he? Once again. Yeah, 92 left. Now he knows what he wants. That's what he wants. And he almost gets a really interesting 117. However, this is for a break of throw a second one. And he might just need the bullseye himself. 43. Not quite. Well, can Whitlock sweep up here with a double 16? Double eight to get a leg on the board in this one. Game shot in the he gets day. it. Mason Whitlock. Four flag, it's Colin to throw first. And a signature blow on the hands. A staple of the Whitlocks. A staple of Australian darts, really. One. Think about some of the places that Australian dart players have to play in. I remember distinctly playing a really big 100. tournament in Ballarat, Victoria in early 2008. There was a nearby forest fire. It, it honestly looked like a bomb had gone off. It was enormous, but the tournament went on. 44 degrees outside, no air conditioning because it makes the darts fly differently. We had all the windows open, all the doors open. We kept the tournament going. By the end of the day, I was talking to the likes of Wayne Weening and Steve Duke Sr. My pals from the MSDA in Croydon, Victoria, and pretty much everybody in that venue, 59. their dart shirt was part of them. We were dripping. And they are the conditions that Australians have had to get used to in the height of summer. 35. And that's why a lot of them blow on their hands because it gives you some sort of texture a way of blowing the sweat off. 58. Why do you think Simon Whitlock came up with the whiz grip, which is something that would get rid of the sweat and give you that tack that you need on your fingertips? It's all to do with climate. Well, Conan Osborne will be the one here breaking a sweat after leaving the bogey number of 166. He's left it again. He's thinking about it. Of course he's gone for it. If people ask him for his signature no, in the street, not. he's just going to write Mason Whitlock 150. It's going to become his typical shot. I like that a lot. Double six. Game I like that even more. There. It's a 3-1 lead Boy, for the Wizard, helpful. and he's one leg away from 18 points. And the one person who was watching this Very with an eagle eye more than anybody first. else is Kieran Smith, because I'm sure in the background he's thinking, I messed up. When I played against Osborne earlier, I missed my chance of going through, but guess what, Kieran? He's doing you a favour right now, potentially, so that you don't have to stress any more. 100. Well, he won't be winning this game if Mason Whitlock has anything to say about it. He's just started his leg with a 180. Oh, come on, Mason. You've got you to do your homework. 50 Start with a 180. You get yourself a 171 with... Three treble 19s after that, then you can have a nine dart with three bulls. Try and do it before Connor Scott. One I hundred. dare you. Because he desperately wants to be the first person in the world to get the nine dart with three bulls. Maybe somebody else could do it before Connor Scott. He would hate that. Because it was his idea. <laughs> 30. Mason, so, first to the finish in this leg is Mason Whitlock here on the 139. He'll want to set it up well. He's got time. 62 left. 87. And Colin's got to go 19s here on 271. A new school counter would have. 27. Mason, you've acquired So, for 3 2 to keep his very slim hopes alive. Double 16. 
36. He's not going to pay the price for those misses. Well, the pressure was off, but that's not always a good thing. I don't know if you in the live chat will agree with me, but sometimes when you've got time to think about double, you overthink 45. it, and that's the worst you thing that you can 16. do. But here we are. He's got at least six darts, well, five darts now at it. Game shot on the fifth He'll be so glad to put that nice one away, Wenny. When somebody hits a shot like that, we have to pay attention as to what they can do with a partial to bed to hit. That is a world-class dart. That is not the kind of dart you're going to see from someone down the local on a Friday night who just throws once a week. 100. That's the dart of someone who is harnessing their skills with every single day that they've got. These players can hit that shot. 26. Not everybody can. And you can see that sort of darting prowess here at the Moda Super Series Live Lounge in Portsmouth on a Saturday. Come on down and get to finals night. Colin Osborne looks like he's going to be there. There's a QR code on the screen. Of course you want to scan 59. Colin knows all about Saturday nights. He's going to notch up another one. Sixty. He's Aussie, 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 high, high, high up the table. Meanwhile, Whitlock is quite far down under. Forty-one. I just actually had a message from Simon Whitlock. I'm not even sure I can tell <laughs> tell you what he says. One hundred. But it's along the lines of preparation for your hands before you throw. Maybe we can bring it up in Mason's last match because his last match might indeed and looks like it's going to be his last match here this week. That will be against Kieran Smith in game 15. 51. And Colin is inching towards finishing the job. Now, Osborne's got 50. Tempted, Colin? 93. Are you tempted? Colin, you require 50. He's tempted, all right. What do you want to do? Surely not. He's going for it. Oh, Colin. Chicken. Double 16. And he wins the game. So the wizard has got 18 points to figure it out. And he takes Mason Whitlock out of the equation. He's not going to make Saturday on debut. And the most relieved man in the building right now is Kieran Smith, who has found his way to Saturday night after being bottom of Group A. So Whitlock loses that match by four legs to two. Colin Osborne's got one match left against Walker in game 13. And when he plays that, he'll look for a little slice of history to see if he can get to 20 points in Group C. But before that, it's going to be a matter of Beanie up against Mr. Relief, Kieran Smith.
Welcome back. We have two more names in the hat for Saturday night with four games to go. The two that were at the top of the table at the start of play, they've just had some very good news. Especially the man in blue who is relieved to say the least. The levity around Kieran Smith at the minute is very evident because he was a very frustrated individual after his last match that he lost to Osborne 4-3. He missed his chance to be through First with two games to play. To throw first. However, Game on. Osborne's done him a favour since then in beating Mason Whitlock. And now he has got that springboard to Saturday night, Chris Murphy. Absolutely has. And it's Aaron Beanie who's seeming to have the most difficult day so far. He's lost all three Easy of his five. matches. Defeats two Whitlock, Osborne and Lloyd Walker. 83. So Kieran Smith would have earmarked this as a game that he feels he should win, but now he doesn't have to win. So what does that do for him? Does that take the pressure away and he plays better? Or does he take the, the foot off the gas too much and just relax? All week I think he has been playing with pressure, so it'll be interesting to see what he does for a couple of games without it. Because, yes, he knew he was out of the race in Group A pretty early, but he was also losing game after game and would have been desperate to get that win. And let's just remind you, if you haven't been watching all week, Kieran Smith, the ADC qualifier, only won one match in Group A. One win from 15. And now he's through to finals night. That is what second chances are for. 58. No more second chances after Group C. Maybe he's a player that just likes to play with the one chance. 85. Having that little bit of extra jeopardy, like I said a little bit earlier. But I do get the feeling that something that Kieran has to learn Eight, is to cut himself a break. You're not going to win every game you play at the Motor Super Series. Everybody has lost here. Every player has lost at least a match. 98. So if you lose, don't cut yourself in ribbons. Do yourself a favour. Cut yourself a break. Accept it and move 44. on. Aaron Ibrakoya, 164. Not taking this out, Aaron Beanie. So Smith will return for one three three. Forty two. Yeah, he really capitulated at the end of his match with Colin Osborne, didn't he earlier on? This is on. Two hits. One hundred and twenty. Almost the beauty. Aaron Ibrakoya, one hundred and twenty two. How does he hit this 54? Because of the way his darts behave, 54. that was Here in very, Eight. very hot. Desmond. Four. Aaron requires 68. You can see that frustration spilling over again for Kieran Smith that Paul Nicholson pointed out. Beanie, understandably frustrated after two big segments were missed. 20. Kieran, you require four. Back to double two, then. And this is for a break in eight visits. Just power it past that. Or through them. No score. No way through. Aaron, you require 48. So many wayward ones from Aaron Beanie at the moment. Sixteen. A long way off the mark. Kieran, you require four. He's trying to stick his fork in the baked beans and keeps finding the bacon. <laughs> it's not the worst result. Game shot not That's first. not the worst result either. Kieran's not the best leg so far today, but Kieran will take it. Like it's Kieran's we haven't had the place. conversation yet, and I'm sure it's Game been on, on your mind all day, Paul. What's that? Baked beans on the plate with the rest of the breakfast or in one of those little bowls separate. Get them on the plate. Forget the side bowl. Anybody who Forty. has beans next to a breakfast or next to toast, get out. I 
thought you might say that. It's beans on toast, not beans with toast. No, it's not beans next to toast. I've had this argument for the last 10 years. It's beans on toast. Glad I asked now. Yeah, I'm I'm rather passionate about subjects like that. You don't have egg next to toast, do you? It's called on toast. Yeah, the first thing I I must say when I go to a a cafe and I get in, in a little silver bowl or something, the first thing I do is just empty it onto the plate. Exactly, it's just extra dishes. By the way, on the subject of beans, there's a very famous rhyme when it comes to beans, isn't there? Yeah, are you going to give us a few, uh, a little rendition? No, oh, beans, beans, they're good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you dart. Very good. The more you dart, the better you feel. So watch a mode of super series with every meal. 132. <laughs> Get that on a T-shirt. With some beans on the sleeves. 41. Here and it require 107. Well, now, big fish time. I think we've got a few players. Now this group is done and dusted that are wanting to do a few interesting things. There's been loads of comments in the chat since Mason Whitlock hit that blind 180. I think all of the players now are thinking about, right, what can I do to make my mark? Do a Dave Pallet. Leave one five nine after six. Sixty. Gary never quite ninety three. I wouldn't recommend that, by the way. If you do want to throw six perfect dots, I would leave a finish. I like this. Sixty one. Gary never quite one hundred and fifty five. There's a portion of me that thinks that Kieran might have a little bit of a temper. He's just really passionate, maybe. Go down there and insult him. We'll soon find out. <laughs> yeah. quite 32. I'm sure that will go down well. Size of me. Uh, double 16 might ease any anger. Game shot the He's second quite good at that, Kieran particularly Smith. that side of the board. If he puts one outside double 16, so often he finds it with a second dart. Definitely well, seen many there. examples of that today. One bit of advice, Kieran, ahead of Saturday. Use some new flights tomorrow. Yours are looking a little bit weathered. 60. Last week, it was Stevie Johnston, wasn't it? He was using flights on a Thursday and Friday that should have been in the bin. Yeah, what a heartbreaking week he had, by the way, Stevie Johnston. I don't think anybody's had as much of the heartbreak hotel visits as he did last week. That, 60. Was, that was borderline unfair. It was in- Different matches in different groups where winning would have got him through and he lost on each occasion. After starting the final day of Group A, an odds-on favourite to win it. Yeah, one to five, wasn't he? 100. I've just had a really nice message from Simon Whitlock, something that I can read, by the way. He's just about to leave for the venue in Risa, so good luck, Simon. We wish you all the best tonight against Cameron Menzies. 100. He's very proud of Mason's efforts. As he should be. It's nice to have had Simon's company this afternoon. And I'm sure that Mason's 100. journey is just beginning. Uh, I got a little tweet as well saying he taught Mason everything he knows after that blind 180. I don't think that's the kind of thing Simon would pull. Yeah, I don't think so either. He's more of a three bulls kind of guy. Yeah, kept trying that one, didn't he, Mason? But with no success, we will see him again in his last game against this man, Kieran Smith, last game of this group. And it was that game that set Kieran on the path. 99. Had he lost that match, we could be looking at a very, very different scenario. It will be 86 for 3 nil. And we are yet to get a 4-0 today. Is this going to be 86. that game? He's doing a gezzy. Drop the dart, then hit the shot. This would be fun. 61. Can't Aaron quite manage it, but Beanie 
on a three-figure finish and hasn't shown many signs of this kind of thing to date. Very nice. Not so. And that is the ultimate darting irony, isn't it? How many times do players do that? They'll find a treble, they'll miss a big number. Missed single. Missed single. This has happened before. In his previous match, and he was not happy no, at all when it happened. That was interesting. We had this argument yesterday about a different finish. He he, he declined just setting up four there yeah, to leave himself on 25. He bust on purpose. Would you rather have four or 25? Well, four. Kieran to throw first. Game on. Whereas yesterday, I think he might have... 61, a, wasn't it? It was slightly different, but what it shows with that last dart is that he's just throwing it away. And someone who's got experience, like Aaron Beanie, will, will see that and think, well, if you don't want it, I'll have it. Well, yesterday, I think the opponent was on a, on a high finish. Beanie was on a double there. And he almost, you're right, he's basically said to Beanie, I've lost this leg. You go up against people with a really good darting awareness. They will 57. gobble you up. You do that against someone with talent and experience, they will have you for breakfast, beans and all. 85. You show them nothing. That's rule number one. If you feel something, you hide it. What you show them is positivity. 41. You show them no negativity. But at the minute, if I was to sit down with Kieran and give him some advice, I'd say... Enough of that arm flailing, young man. And I don't mean to sound like a father figure or a teacher. 41. But if you want to get better against experienced players, you've got to play it more like a robot. Have passion, show the positivity, hide the negativity. One of the problems in this game is it's about perfection, isn't it? You've got to throw the perfect dart to find the target. And you've missed more than you hit. And... I think the players that are capable of hitting quite regularly, when they do miss, they, they don't sort of understand that ratio and it becomes a a real mental problem 45. if you can't accept that. I think that's a great point. I've seen people very recently who've got a lot of talent who score 140. Whoa, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to get on my high horse now for about 10 seconds. Why would you score 180 and shake your head? That's the point. Here in requires 68. I'm wondering if nobody's told him that the top two go through. He thinks it's only one or something. Not sure he wanted to leave tops, 48. but that's what he has a go at. I mean, what did you want to score? 240? <laughs> it's not a quad board. Right, I'm off my high horse now. I promise. Right, what we want to see 44. here, Kieran, is double 10 and a nice big 20. Colgate smile. Or a ferret finger. Ten. I had it surrounded. And what we got was a missing double ten and another little strop. Well, that's the first four, first five letters of Portsmouth, isn't it? Strop. One hundred. Strop mouth. Kieran, you require ten. Right, come on, Kieran. Game shot on the fourth leg. Kieran Smith. There we go, but still doesn't seem satisfied. He was, he used the, the word, didn't Aaron he? To throw first. Buzzing yesterday. He went to describe his day, to describe his experience here. I don't know what's happened. Well, how would you describe it now if he was buzzing yesterday? What's he feeling now? What he's projecting yeah, he is the exact opposite of a buzzing bee. Someone who has had their nectar and just floated off down the river. Well, you said it. Sixty. I mean, you say it several times that players should watch back and and learn. And I think there is lessons here for Kieran, particularly ahead of tomorrow night. When if you give those opponents on a ninety-six, pretty much a straight knockout night, an inch, they will take a mile. You give this projection of mood to Corn and Whitehead, to Victor Tingstrom, to Colin Osborne. He will. They will eat you alive. 
140. Think about the experience of certain players, and it, it's mythical with the likes of Taylor and Van Gerwen and Bristol. They could beat you without 50. even throwing. Now, at this level, there are no better players with the grey matter between their ears than the likes of Whitehead and Osborne. This is a very, very important lesson he's got to learn if he wants to get better. So, being on 147, may teach him a lesson in this match yet. Well, let me talk Let me talk a little bit in, in his language. It's the equivalent of Raheem Sterling getting four goals and saying, you know what, I wanted six instead. He's done his job, he's through. 47. And I think there is something frustrating from sitting in our seats. Yeah, people might think we're being overcritical, but 133. primarily we're Darts fans, and most Darts fans would love to be in that position. Wouldn't they just? It's going to be 62 for a 4-1 victory, and whether he knows he's through or not, this is to grab another win to get to 14 points. Double 16. Game shot he does match. win. He Can does get to 14 spin. points. A 4-1 success. Not happy with how he played. And it wasn't the greatest performance. But look, it's job done. Embrace it. Enjoy it. And hopefully he can do that when he takes on Mason Whitlock in his final match of the day. Beanie is beaten again. He has really struggled. And it's understandable with the shoulder injury that he is trying to fight back from his return to darts. Well, it was okay yesterday. Hasn't gone well today. He's still got Robert Thornton to play. But coming up next, it's Colin Osborne, the Group C winner, taking on Lloyd Walker. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series from the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where the hometown boy Lloyd Walker is about to complete his campaign after his late call-up. Walker replaced Owen Bowden who withdrew after yesterday and has managed to earn himself a couple of victories 
in this group. Or one victory in the group, I should say. Looking to earn himself a couple of victories. Colin Osborne, though, he's the main story. He's earned himself nine victories in nine matches. And if he wins this one, he will join an illustrious roll of honour of players to have gone through a Group C campaign the unbeaten. Colin to throw first. Game on. The Wizard about to get the game underway. And if he wins it, he will join Richard North and James Wilson in finishing a Group C with 10 wins out of 10. And that, Lewis Martin, was almost the perfect start. Almost, but he'll want the perfect finish today with 10 wins. And he'll want to continue that on to Saturday. Lloyd here, Lloyd Walker, with another opportunity to prove himself. Every game is so important for him here. It's his chance on the big stage to say to you lot, notice me. Yeah, and the selectors here at the Super Series, maybe more importantly. That's a little quirk that we have Colin Lloyd in this clash. 54. Forty-one has done some magical things in this group, and let's not forget if he does win all of his matches in this group, it will be the third time this week 85. that he's won every match in a day. I don't think that's ever been done. He's showing that he's still got it. Eighty-four, and is this a launching platform for him? What are his aspirations in the future? That's what you've got to ask. If he can keep winning here, 59. he shows that he is capable in competition. He still is. He's still competitive. He still wants to play. He enjoys playing here. He's enjoyed that. A couple of bullseyes in the mix there from Lloyd Walker. They're all at it. But Osborne wants the ball to win the leg. Close. Lloyd, you require now we need a single 15 bull bull. Played it sensibly. He wants to finish. That was smart. 25. Colin, you require 25. I've seen ball 15 ball before. Never seen anyone do it by starting on the 15s. But it's double eight. Game for Osborne, who carries on doing Colin what he's Osborne. been doing. And interestingly, you made the point about, you know, that winning feeling. And it is a results business, of course Still it is. Like but he's played a lot better than he has this week in previous visits without anywhere near the same success. 60. Well, it's a strange one. It's a strange one. You can win every single game, but perhaps still be disappointed that you've not reached the levels you know you're capable 95. of. Strange from a mental perspective, but I've got to say, and I think everyone will agree with me, that winning games is the best feeling. 60. It doesn't matter how well you play. If you lose, part of you is hurt and loses a bit of confidence. Colin Osborne here. He'll take the wins. He'd like to be in a record book. Yeah, he's been in plenty of record books. It was a week, of course, that saw him pass the 100 mark in terms 95. of wins at the Motor Super Series. He's played an enormous amount of games. He's really been a mainstay, a part of the furniture in this tournament. But maybe that furniture could become a throne come the end of the series. Of course, did lose... Two Luke Littler in a grand final. We'll have that score to settle. We'll dress into the treble one now. Unlucky for him on trying to take out this 167. Lloyd Walker on a bogey number here. 162 can't quite take it out mathematically. But he can still put the pressure on. Yeah, certainly 42. because... Osborne's still on a big combination finish. Even 120 is slightly more favourable than 124. Needs a treble 18 and a bullseye. Can't get the first part of that equation. 39. So Lloyd Walker straight up the 20s. Treble, single, double. And that is that. That finish wasn't quite lightning. 40. It's more like a light drizzle. 85. Double nine. Game shot Nicely done leg. by Colin Osborne. Colin now two Osborne. legs away from that perfect campaign. For leg, it's Colin to throw first. 
Didn't yeah, seem to realise that he was throwing first there. He's so relaxed up there. Of course you would be if you were winning so many games. He can't stop winning. All he does is win. Because he never had that big major success in PDC darts. I think some people maybe yeah, forget how not... good he was in his professional career. Of course, he did win that championship league. He played in similar conditions, Three, really, to the Moda Super Series. That was back in 2009. But a runner-up in the UK Open the same year. The next year, he was a semi-finalist at the Players' Championship Finals. He's been 97. to the quarter-finals of the World Championship and has won seven professional ranking titles as well. 134. Ted in the chat asking, what's Walker's nickname? It is the Lightning. 70. I don't know if that's just alliterative or whether it's down to his quick-throwing style. It is quick, but we have got quicker here at the Moda Super Series. You're going to have to speed up to match the likes of Alex Small, Lloyd, and a couple of other players. 120. Colin Osborne, of course, is the wizard, a nickname that for a time he shared with Simon Whitlock. 41. We saw Mason Colin Whitlock keep attempting this on the 19s. Osborne goes a more conventional route and ends on tops but 94. not in it in fact some way away from it some way away but he's got time I was finding it an interesting story that they played a world championship 95. match for the nickname but Osborne had that nickname first and it to step aside and let somebody else have your nickname which he did 13 years ago no that score. was interesting oh you recall 146 it's got to hurt. He was not the chosen one, but it's a one four six here that Lloyd Walker can't quite take out. 60. Colin, you require 20. So two tens for Osborne to move within one of an unblemished campaign. Game shot the and he keeps there. doing it, Colin keeps Osborne. doubling. And again, without really getting out of second gear, Colin Osborne is cruising to towards the chequered flag. Right, come on then, Lloyd Walker. What are you made of? Whoa, That's what he's made of. 80. Now, Chris Murphy, wouldn't it be a moment if Lloyd Walker, the local lad, on his debut 86. here, could hit the magical one? I'm not going to say what it is. Well, do you know what? I don't think that's a bad dart because we've seen a couple 60. of players that are pretty new to this one if it started with the 180 and a terrible next visit. But that wasn't far off the treble 20. Got to stop jinxing it. Whoa, Shows him how it's done. But Osborne wants this done as quick as possible. Hitting a 180 back at Walker 57. just shows the measure of the man, the class of the man. Still can leave a finish with two trebles. That's gone now. 45. So advantage Walker in leg four. Speaking of wizards, famous one being Voldemort. Is he going to Voldemort walk all over the Walker? 57. Well, he needs to leave himself pretty handy here because you can never, ever rule out a darter. On a one four seven out, unfortunately now that you can for Lloyd Walker. 40. Chance for Colin Osborne to wrap it up. 130. One treble required. But now he can't finish. Walker will 50. not want to end but would you require a match without winning a leg. It's been a decent enough debut campaign. But if Osborne takes out 80, 47. it will end with a whitewash defeat. 80. Is he going to do it in style? Is he going to go tops, tops? I fancy not. Oh, he's gone for it. That's what always happens. Welcome to the world of commentary. They do what you say they won't do. Yay, but what Colin Osborne, Osborne has match. done is won Colin every Osborne. single match in Group C. A remarkable feat achieved. He joins the record book with Richard North and James Wilson. And he has won all five games for the third time this week what a week it's turning out to be for the wizard a 4-0 success over lloyd walker and osborne wins the group by winning 
every match. We do have two more games to come for you. Kieran Smith will take on Mason Whitlock, but before that, Robert Thornton meets Aaron Beanie. We're here at the Modus Super Series Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've got Robert Thornton here, the Fawn, playing Aaron Beanie, two pros of the game there, sharing a quick exchange. It's been a mixed bag for them both. Both of them struggling a little bit with a shoulder and an arm injury. You could say it's a battle of the bad arms, this one. But both of them wanting to get a win on the board for their final game of the week. Well, Thornton has started to show a bit more. He's won over Mason Whitlock in a 4-3 and also over Lloyd Walker in a 4-3. Aaron Beanie here. He'll want to put a win on the board. I'm joined again. My name is Lewis Martin. I'm joined again by Paul Nicholson. Paul what is the most important thing for these two players to take away from this week's tournament? One more win. Twenty-six. That's to keep things simple, but you don't want to leave on a loss. We were talking about Mason Whitlock yesterday and how he wanted to end the day with a win and something to take home with him. He 24. did that. I think the important thing here for Aaron is... No matter how you're feeling, do your best to try and get two points by the end of the day. The last thing you want One is to walk away hundred. with zero. If Robert walks away with six points, that means he has won more games than he's lost today. It's about how that will make you feel. They're both in pain. But someone's going to feel a lot better, potentially, Ooh, after the D4. next seven legs. Yeah, knock out the painkillers here. But both of these established darting players who have played the very best at the top level, Aaron Beanie being away from competition, as we've referred to through the week, he'll want to use this as a launch pad for getting back into the swing of 45. things. You've got to start somewhere. 
Might as well be in Portsmouth. What he's got to take away with him after this match is information. One he knows hundred. how he felt under the lights once again. He knows exactly how his body feels. He's got to put things right if he wants to move forward with this starting career. As for Robert, 59. it'll just be a reset over the next few days. I'm not sure competitive action after this for a few days is a wise move. So he'll go back to Scotland, 28. repair himself, and get ready for his next challenge, which I'm sure is not that far away. I've just been looking into Colin Osborne's numbers from yesterday 58. to today. It makes for a very interesting reading. 40 doubles hit over the last couple of days. 116 61. attempts. That's not too bad. But if I may just dig a little deeper and paint a bit of a picture. Yes, he's won 20 points and he's joined that exclusive club of Richard North and James Wilson in winning all 10 matches. 66. But in getting his 20 doubles today, he did it with 28 fewer darts today at double. Huge improvement 91. in that department. And that is something we'll definitely talk about in the lead up to Saturday night. Well noted. Robert Fulton here leaves himself tops, but Aaron Beanie wants to put the pressure on. 140. Robert, you require. When you've got a problem on your right side, the body gets involved. The first That's what we saw Robert from Aaron. Thornton. What we've seen from Robert is what we see from him most of the time, whether he's injured or not. Second leg, it's he Aaron never has a problem first. with double tops. We need a uh, Moda Super Series super massager 36. for his arm. An in-house therapist would have been handy for these two over the last couple of days. 84. Always beware the wounded player. I can testify to that. I've won a PDC Pro event with two broken ribs. I didn't even know they were broken at the time. That's probably why I won. 28. But there have been other players who have won or been successful without being 100%. I always like to reference Michael Smith at the 2019 UK Open. He could barely walk, but he still made the semi-finals. The thing about being hurt or wounded in some way is that you focus more on that and not on the pressure. Not on the in-game anxieties. You just get on with it. 85. If Robert can play at this level, and I suppose today he's looked more uncomfortable than any day this week. But he's actually had one of his best days. 15. He wins this game, he's got six points for the day. The darts world moves in mysterious ways. 134. But there's nothing mysterious about his ability to leave a finish. And if he gets a treble 20, 60. 999 times out of 999 attempts, he will go 16 for double top. Because that's just how he works. Well, I didn't fancy someone leaving double 19. Especially that someone being Robert Thornton, but... I guarantee you this. If there was a minus two segment on the board, he would take it for tops. 41. Robert, you're required but that's not how the game is played. Double eight. 30. Aaron is way back. There's a real risk that Aaron is the second player in a row to have a bagel next to his name. We didn't 82. have one until that previous match eight. with Osborne and Walker. Well, double four here to go 2-0 up. No score. Can't quite get it. He's still got more time, but each missed start is another doubt in the mind. Maybe Aaron Vini is playing a tactical masterclass by giving him too much 43. to think about. 
probably require. Eight. Let's find out. Double two. First and foremost, forget about that bad dot of double four. Madhouse. Six. He's very mad. Aaron now, Paul Nicholson, I've watched enough darts to know that in this kind of leg, someone like Aaron Beanie is going to take this out, isn't he? Commentator's curse. What a fool I look. It's the dart player that thinks they're the fool when they're on double one after 24 darts. He's eagle eyeing that double one. No score. Low and left is never good on double one. Is he going to take this one? Ironically, if that was a quad board, that would have been in the quad. One up, one in. That's usually the rule. No score. Three up, none in is never good. So here we are, tops to steal the leg from quite far back. He was on 260. Still a chance for Robert to win in 11 visits. These two are running out of adrenaline and Aaron Beanie is running out of time. I'm not sure what that celebration was about. <laughs> so look, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. Hasn't been a good afternoon for Robert. Hasn't been a good afternoon either for his good pal Mervyn King, who has lost at the International Darts Open on his return to European Tour action after 20 months, losing to Willie O'Connor of Ireland. Congratulations to everybody who's won this afternoon. Brendan Dolan was good this afternoon, averaging 103. More darts from Reset tonight. More darts from us tonight as well. 180. Don't miss what we've got on the menu from 10 o'clock because the likes of Whitehead, Grunewald and others will be back to see 60. who gets those last three spots in Saturday. And Bradley Brooks, how good was he last night? How good was, was he? 87. And how good was Pete Burgoyne? Four points from here. He'll be very happy with that. And if he does it again, he might just snag third spot. Do not miss the climax of Group B. Should Safety. be thrilling from 10 o'clock. Well, we're talking of Bam Bam. Can Robert Fulton Bam Bam his way to a 3-0 lead? 57. Frustrated. He's frustrated. Though he is comfortably ahead in this leg. He's got the luxury of starting on the 25 here, which for someone who likes tops, it's the right thing to do. Okay, don't listen to me. I've only known you 15 years, Robert. 92. It's actually 16. He's going to go straight for double 15. He's not going to split it. Well, now you've cursed it. 81. We'll see a magical split here. Don't let me down, Robert. Thanks, pal. Don't let yourself down. Go to the top on the right-hand side. Listen to me. Yeah, listen to someone who's won less majors than you have. No score. Well, that looked like he went for the single tap. Aaron, you 142. But he was having a stare down with the board there. I'd be shaking in my boots if I was that dartboard staring down an angry Robert Thornton. Well, if he chose to split this, I wouldn't blame 30. him. He's going to go straight for it. Double five. He's going around the houses again. Require 101. Well, judging by this week, it's got to be bull one bull. Got double double. Chose to go against it. 61. Robert, you require five. So the big number, single one. No score. Unlucky for him Aaron, there. You require 40. He's really struggling here in this game. Aaron Beanie here. He's got a chance to get the leg on the board. 
Come on, Aaron, let's get a bit of fire in this game. 20. Just not there. Robert, you're required. When the five. adrenaline's gone, it's a hard game to play under the lights. Double two. It's back at ones again for the second consecutive leg. No score. Aaron, you require 20. I don't think they've got the memo about the fact that the referee gets paid by the leg. Or by the minute. Well, that, yeah, Aaron Beanie there. makes him pay. 2-1. And he hangs his head in shame. <laughs> it's not really a game to be proud of. It's Aaron to throw first. Game on. Just a question of massaging your integrity here and just trying as hard as you can to get one more win. And Aaron 29. hasn't got any today. Well, you've got a feel for him, for him here. He's he's clearly struggling in this game. But Aaron Beanie is someone who's 16. well liked amongst the darts community. We can only hope that he takes some confidence from actually just being back on the stage. It's all about building his confidence back, I'm sure. And let's just hope he can take away from this game 16. and this tournament some positives. But from this game specifically, he won't be massively happy, nor will this man on your screen, Robert Thornton. These are both big names in the darting world. But be philosophical about where they are at the minute. They're not qualifying. They're just playing one game of darts. They're not 100%. Put it down to that. 25. Forget about it and move on. Sometimes you've got to play when you're not 100%. And let's... Let's find out what you can do when that's the case. No, if I was not. in this position, and I have been in this position, I remember playing Scott Mitchell from home when this project was from home. I was sweating profusely in the middle of the summer with a really knackered shoulder. And I said, do you know what? Let's just find a way. 26. Let's just play the game and see how my shoulder feels. And it just so happens that was the last game I played for about two months. Should I play that match? Absolutely. 42. But playing hurt is not fun. Especially when you don't know how to fix it. One hundred. You can see that Aaron is leaning into the throw. Technically, he's very good. But what he's doing today is he's leaning into the third dart, putting more of his body into it, because his arm doesn't want to do 82. the work. That's called a classic overcompensation. Look at that right shoulder jumping forward, especially on the third dart. Watch out for this. There it is. He's just jumping forward. That's not what he usually does. To me, that indicates pain. He's not quite as fluid. He's not able to get that full extension. And he's having to get his shoulder Aaron into the action. That's, of course, going to put darts wide. Now there's 21 off. 41. Somewhat Aaron unfortunate not to get 81, but 62 for the man we call Chocolate. Double top. 22. He is sick of missing Aaron doubles in this game. He's missed 24 of them. So it's a Shanghai here that can't be done now. Now, Robert Thornton, we know that your talent on tops is unmatched. 84. Let's see a bit 40. of it. When in doubt. Game shot not Just hit the other one. 3-1 Thornton. Thornton. 53, the end is nigh. First. Game on. And here's the thing. Knowing Robert, he's probably driven here all the way from Scotland. He's going to go home tomorrow. 100. And when you're not 100% physiologically, that's a long way to go when you're not feeling 100%. <laughs> My advice to Robert is, get some advice when you get back to Scotland. Get yourself straightened 100. out. Well, let's hope he's got some good songs to soothe the mood on the way up. Yeah, likes a bit of Proclaimers. No, likes your rhythmics, in fact. Big, big fan of Annie Lennox. 
Well, this week he's been darting 1,000 times and hitting double one 1,000 times more. Sensible use of the 18s. Trying to leave 170, which could be his last shot of the week. Nine. That'll do. Final game is going to be Kieran Smith against Mason Whitlock. Eighty-one. Everything's said and done. Osborne is going to go through with Smith. It'll be fascinating to get the views of Osborne before he plays on Saturday night. Ninety-three. His win percentage this week has been fabulous, but when we crunch the numbers ahead of Saturday night, we're going to have to take it with a little bit of realism. As in, how well did Colin have to play it? And in this game, as for how well Robert has had to play it, all he needed to do was hit that tops and he would have won. Well, Aaron Beanie has a chance to make it 3-2 here. He's not out of the game. He's hit the treble, so that gives him the double 19. 57. Now it's time well, for Robert to end this. Maybe to end their pain and their misery and their suffering in Group C. And that's what he does. Robert Thornton wins an attritional battle in our penultimate match. Aaron Beanie, well, it hasn't been your day, and it definitely hasn't been Robert's. Unfortunately, his perfect record of making Saturday nights here at the Motor Super Series is over. But we'll see them both again, I'm sure. Get yourselves all right, lads. Leave the stage and leave it for Kieran Smith and Mason Whitlock, who will be the final match here on Friday afternoon. Thank you for staying with us. We've got one more game for you in Group C here this afternoon at the Live Lounge. And contrasting fortunes for these two. We were somewhat hoping from the neutral standpoint 
that this game would be a bit of a shootout to see who goes through with Colin Osborne. However, it hasn't worked out that way. And this will be Mason but Whitlock's last Kieran match here reversed. this week. Game on. As for Kieran Smith, who we have said is a hard man to please, he will have this game as preparation for his first Saturday 100. night, which is not that far away, in fact, just over 24 hours away. Yeah, we heard from Kieran Smith yesterday, and he has gone and got the job done. 29. He may actually end up with the exact same record as yesterday, only losing to Colin Osborne. Whoa. Does that a lot, doesn't it? The last dart is rapid, but this time it finds a target. Might as well ask you the question now, Paul, because we're going to be chatting to the group winner, Colin Osborne, after this. What have you made of Mason Whitlock's first week? I'm impressed. I think there's a good enough base level. 57. A good few highlights in there. I think the one thing that he's shown better than anything the last couple of days is a really good temperament. 85. You can be passionate about this sport, but you've got to be able to manage that at a young age these days if you're going to live with the crop 46. of players that you want to beat. And I think his temperament's been brilliant. What he's got to work on is... His range around that 60, that first dart's got to be better. But the more he plays in this local area, the more he will learn and the better he will get. 94. Well, we all know what he's going to do now, and I think it's your line, isn't it, Paul? I'm saving the line for when he gets the two bulls. And not as confident as you were for Whitlock Senior. Nope. But then again, Whitlock Senior had done it Game's before. The Kieran Smith. And Kieran Smith has done that before, but he's winning legs like it's Mason with a smile on his face this time, which Game. is really nice to see. Maybe he has had a little lesson back to some of our comms in his previous match. But he will be here on Saturday. You could be here as well. Tickets are available via dartshop.tv or by scanning that QR code on your smart device right now. It'll take you to the booking page. Two quid the booking fee and you could be part of the party here in Pompey. And it was a proper darty party last Saturday and I'm sure it will be again this week. Oh, it will be tomorrow. Portsmouth is going to be jumping tomorrow. You want to be here. There'll be a party before we are on the air. There'll be a party when we're on the air and there will be a party after. So... Fair to say that Portsmouth is the place to be in the country tomorrow? And a reminder of the players 60. that have booked their places. This man, Kieran Smith, he is there. Colin Osborne, the group winner, is there. Victor Tingstrom, who won Group A, is there. And we will 96. find out the final three tonight. 10pm, we are back on air in Group B. Conan Whitehead, Bradley Brooks, the two that are looking the most likely to progress, and Pete ends. Burgoyne, David Wazowski, and Corne Gronevel, the other players in that group. We could still get the maximum amount of Group A players through to Saturday night. That is pretty much reliant now on Corne Groeneveld having a really good night alongside Conan Whitehead. So my tip for the night is do not miss Bradley Brooks playing tonight. He was excellent last night. He still wasn't top. Conan was. Bullseye. 62. Mason, you record 133. Troisters here for Whitlock. Not going to take it out. So Smith will return for the remaining 25. 59. Kieran, you require 25. Pick your route, of which there are plenty. That's not one of them. No score. Mason, you require 74. Go north. Up to the top. 54. You can't shout it from the top. Kieran, you require 25. You've got to get this right this time. He does get the single. So, double eight. He's very good at this shot. Game shot in the second. And he's done it again. Kieran Smith. That dart just outside double eight, double sixteen. He seems to be able to use well, time and time Kieran again. First. Maybe his strongest weapon. Yeah, if he's going to leave those doubles, certainly. Just must give him confidence if he plants that marker that he is going to hit. Well, he nearly went with the dart then. Wow. 
If he wins this game, he'll be on 16 points for the group. That's some effort, considering he had two points in 15 games in the first three days. What a turnaround. Very good. But what I'm really looking forward to doing come Saturday, Murph, is gauging the stats against the players who will be playing each other. 80. I think it's important to know that Smith and Osborne in this group have been winning but taking full advantage of other players not playing well. There's a difference between winning a belting match and winning a game where somebody doesn't perform against you. 56. If we compare Group C to Group B, when it comes to Saturday, there will be a big gap between them. But how many times do you hear Dark players say it? It's all on the night. What's to say that Victor Tingstrom will bring his Group A form? You make it better? 140. We might have someone sneak through in a last spot Group B and suddenly turn up on Saturday. It's happened before. I'll say one thing. Mason Whitlock's No Look 180 is doing the rounds on social media, by the way. That was almost... That's my bull. Yeah, Simon Whitlock himself approved. I love that finish. He's just trying everything to leave the ball. That would have been two fifty ones for ball. I really like that shot, in fact. He's enjoying himself, and that's good to see. You mentioned temperament. Mason Whitlock has accepted the fact he's out and then decided I'm here to entertain. I think he's accepting the fact that you learn more from losing than you do from winning. This is just the first step. 140. You don't see the horizon after getting onto one step. You see it by climbing the ladder even more incrementally. 120. By the time he comes back, because I'm sure he will at some point, he'll probably be taller. Maybe have a few extra kilos and be 59. way more experienced because thinking about the amount of time that he's been playing darts to get to this level, his progression is quick. Yes, uh, I know, obviously, he's been around darts his whole life, but he didn't have much interest in it, did he, until lockdown. A familiar story of late. Lockdown really did uh, tap into some untapped talent in this sport. A few people found they had a skill that they weren't aware of. 58. It's amazing how many players have come out of the woodwork because of this place. And the increased prize funds in the sport. Money talks. Whitlock here determined not to bow out with a whitewash loss. And he's going to get the opportunity to get a leg in the ledger. Okay. Now he wants double eight. 60. That was one of those, I don't even need the first dart shots can actually understand him trying that with the first start and then going for the treble on that occasion because at least he knew he'd be leaving a double if he hit a couple 60. of singles. He's Amazing flamboyant, but he, what he does makes a lot of sense as he gets his first leg of this contest. How many times do you see a player go that double-double with three darts and then just stick at then it and end up Kieran missing two out first. of the board and then they're not Game on the double when they come back? Yeah, that's a pet hate of mine. The amount of times I've seen Richard North... And some other people go for two double tops. They miss it high. Then they miss it high again. Honestly, it's like putting sand in my custard. 100. Well, Smith wants to get it done here. 93. Good start. A two treble turn followed by... A one treble visit. And this is one of those numbers where you've got multiple routes to get to a finish. You can start 19s, 18s, or you can start in 20s. And he's got a healthy lead, so he doesn't really have to be that creative. He's not going to leave a finish. 60. I just don't think in that moment. I know he doesn't have to leave a finish. 
but create good habits. I think starting on the 19s is the best play on 268. You can go treble, single, 25, which is 101 to leave 167. Two singles and a 60 to leave 170. It's just 50. good thinking. Setting your stall out for doing the right things in the right moments. I want to know now how much Kieran Smith has been watching Mason Whitlock today because he's left 150. Mason's saying right now, what are you going to do? Are you going to do it Kieran against McGuire, me? 150. He decides to go the more approved route. 80. I'm not sure what Mason's thinking was there, but had he got three trouble 19s, it would have busted. 58. That may have it broke the internet even more. This to win it then, 4 1. One dart a double. Not even that. They are the mistakes he cannot afford Making to make tomorrow. They must be rectified if he wants glory. 13. 13. Oh, that was the intention. 73. Kieran, you require 32. Wanted to do it in style, but he might not do it at all. At least he ends with a smile on his face. Mason Whitlock has made an impact here at the Super Series. But it's Kieran Game Smith who is heading match. through... Karen to Smith. finals night. A 4-1 win to end his campaign and boy has he turned his week around. Remember, only one win in 15 in Group A but only two defeats in Group C. Both of those came in the hands of Colin Osborne, the wizard who wins the group. Smith comes in second and will join him at finals night tomorrow. Mason Whitlock bows out with that 4-1 defeat but he may well be back that remains to be seen smith will be back tomorrow and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes time we're having a chat with the group winner colin osborne <laughs> Here yeah, is Colin Osborne, the winner of Group C. Colin, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Paul's with us as well. Um, first of all, just sum up your week this week at the Super Series, because it's been decent stuff. Uh, in, in patches, Chris, it's, uh, I suppose I didn't play my best, but I, I battled on through, and I think towards the end, the, I think the experience come through. Certainly, you are one of the most experienced players here at the Super Series. Um, and Paul... We've seen him do something incredible this week. Colin, you've just won all of your games for the third time this week and nobody else has ever done that. How does it feel to hear that? That means I've been here quite a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I know I think it was going into yesterday or Wednesday when I'd... Uh, I think you put a stat up, you know, with the in, 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 like in the tons. I think yeah, I was 99, Robert was 98 and Cole was 96. And then when I beat Kieran the first game, I think it was the Wednesday, which chalked another thing off me. But no, it's, it's great. Yeah, really good stuff, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, I mean, it, it, when you think about the amount of experience that Colin's got, he's been playing top-level darts for nearly 20 years. But in this place, you are a legend. And you're not even 50 yet, Colin. You've still got a lot, long way to go. But 
to do something that nobody else has done, considering we've been in this building for nearly two years, that must make you feel really proud because you've done a lot of things that other people haven't done. Uh, I, I suppose as well, it, it's, like a, it's like job satisfaction. You know, and obviously the record's there, you know, and I think so many weekly wins, I've not won a Champions Week yet, but it, it, again, it's like, it's, it, I suppose it's self-satisfaction, but I don't know the stats, you know, on different things, and I suppose a lot of the lads don't. We just come in and play darts, you know, and we play to win. So it's nice to clock up, you know, whatever comes along. What have you made of the standard this week in Group C? Because we know it was slightly under par. There were a couple of players who were struggling with injuries, but you just wanted to go out there and get your job done, right? Oh, 100%. And I know, I mean, I'll be the first to admit I've not performed nowhere near. You know, but I think I spoke to you earlier and the last two days, I know, obviously, other than myself and Rob, with Kieran coming as a debut and obviously young Mason, you know, the other couple of lads, and it was just get in there, get on them early and my experience come through in the end because it wasn't pretty, but I'm sick of playing pretty and losing. <laughs> I don't mind playing average and winning. Uh, is it all about winning isn't it and let me just give you one more stat um, you've won every game in this group only two other players have ever done that so as we can see there Richard North and James Wilson the only two players you join them Colin what kind of confidence does that give you going into finals now on the back of a, a 10 match winning streak uh, I mean, obviously in good company you know but again it's like obviously with, with Kieran coming Monday and I think he lost his first 12 13 games Chris and he was, he was so down, and I was like, it, it's, uh, for me personally, I come down here for five days competitive practice, and whoever goes through on the Wednesday, it's a bonus. You know, I, I, I come down, I prepare myself for five days, and then I was speaking to Kieran after Wednesday and saying, look, I said, tomorrow, clean slate, we go again. And then after that, obviously, Monday to Wednesday and the two days today, and for me again, I'll go back home tonight to the hotel, sorry, and then just and prepare myself tomorrow, and then tomorrow it's when it takes all. What was the biggest weapon that you had this week? Because sometimes it's easy to try and figure that out. But I did a calculation about your doubles today. 20, uh, 20 darts hit a double, 44 attempts. Yesterday it took you 72. So it was 28 darts less at double today to get your 20 legs. What, how does that make you feel? It's, again, Paul, uh, you know yourself, you played the game at the highest level. For, if, if you, you can't analyse or scrutinise yourself, you know. And then if you go back to the beginning of the week, I, I think I probably had more ton plus outs than anybody. And the thing is, if you start looking at it in depth and that, it's just, you stand there, you play the game. And I, I, I will say the last couple of days, me, the one dart in hand, I did take it out. I think that's really good advice, Murph, because there's a lot of players out there, especially young players, who are obsessed with numbers, averages, that answer from Colin is perfect because you, you've got to go and play the game, almost play ignorant to what you've done before and just try and get the win. Well, all his stats this week that we've been speaking about have been about winning, haven't they? They haven't been about averages or finishing. It's all been about winning and that's what is really important. Colin, what is it about this place that seems to bring out that kind of winning mentality in you? Because you, you have won over 100 matches, you've won... As, as much as anybody on that stage. Yep, as you said, not a Champions Week yet. But what is it about this place that seems to get you in the mood? It, it, it's home from home, you know. It's like you're saying, and it's, it's like when I come on this stage, it's like walking in, in my practice room at home. You know, I just feel so comfortable, you know. And I've got nothing to prove to anybody. You know, I just stand there, I enjoy the occasion. We come down here, you know, it's a marvellous venue. And it's just like you say, it's like me walking through my kitchen in, at, at my practice room at the end of the house and just playing darts. So that's how it started, wasn't it, Paul? Literally. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, any, any dart player who has uh, had a journey like Colin has or myself or anybody who walks through that door, they've had a journey to get here. But I think what Colin's saying is it's very similar to what we were talking about with Wolfie last week. If they never threw again, what they've done is remarkable. They've had great times in the sport. But if you're happy with what you've done and you're still playing, you've almost removed the pressure from your game, haven't you? Mm. Uh, my, the, 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 I had a bit of a rough time, you know, going back a few years. It's just, my, the fire in me is, be, it, I think it's the competitiveness. You know, I stand there, does my role I play, I play to win. And I, I, I growl and I groan and I keep it to myself. But oh, the, the competitive instinct is better than ever. One last question, then we'll have a look at the, the rest of the week and the, the group table. But we've seen other players in this group 
some of them out by that point, but they've been trying all sorts of things. Mason Whitlock, blind 180, going for three balls, that kind of thing. There was a moment when you had 50 left and you sort of had a little smile on your face, am I going to go for it? And you didn't. Is that that winning mentality as well? And it did cross my mind, Chris, to be fair, because I think two, two or three legs prior, when he'd done the blind 180, and I think I went out in 12, 14 darts, and it, it was there. I was never going to go for it. Again, it was like, because I know the game, if I could be on double eight and you're on two, 207, and I miss and you went to 140, 180, and then the pressure just stems back to it. And luckily, I went, I went for the 10, and I, I think I had 15, didn't I? And then I went, and, yeah. But no, it's just, it, it's competitive. You know, it doesn't matter how you do it. If, if you're winning 100 average or you're winning a 60 average, it, it, it's about winning. Yeah, and, and, it was and that's what it is. Certainly effective today, and we can see that in the table because Colin Osborne, as we've mentioned, has won every single match, 20 points, a maximum amount in this group. Uh, Paul, just a word on Kieran Smith, and we'll maybe get Colin's opinion on this as well, because he did only win one in 15, mm. but there is one out of 10 to go through. That's not bad. That'll do your confidence a world of good. And consider the swing of what a week here at the Motor Super Series can do. One win from 15. How are you feeling after Wednesday when you go to get dinner or go to bed, you think, well, what is Group C going to give? But you wipe the slate clean, and it just goes to show how early wins can have such a, a huge effect on whoever comes into it. And Kieran Smith's going to gonna fancy doing a lot better on a Saturday night because he's trending in the right direction this week. But I think it's fair to say it. he's going to need to find a few extra points on his average and some, some better doubling because otherwise people of his experience are going to gobble him up. And I've seen you this week, Colin, giving all the players advice, telling them about the 10-second rule and all that. Have you seen Kieran Smith grow this week? Oh, 100%. And like you said, yeah, even after Wednesday, I'd spoke, I, I, I go on my experience, and I'll never preach to anybody, but after the Wednesday, he was so down. And like I said earlier, it's wipe the slate clean, Thursday for a different day. And obviously, he showed the day, you know, he, he shows why he's here, he can play, you know, and winning games bring confidence. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, it's totally... Right, three players confirmed at finals night then in this week. Colin Osborne is one of them. He goes through with Kieran Smith. Victor Tingstrom won Group A. On to Group B tonight, Paul. Conan Whitehead and Bradley Brooks in a good position in that group. Are you expecting them to go through? Yeah, I've done their numbers uh, for tonight and I'm, I'm getting a bit carried away with Bradley Brooks at the minute. I think he looks in great nick. I, I, I love the way that Conan's playing. I've got my eye on that record for consecutive games of the 180 as well. He's at 19, I believe, at this point. So if he continues that tonight, it'll be 23 games with a consecutive max. But Bradley was exquisite last night in last leg shootouts. And I expect Bradley to get through. I expect Conan to be there. And I think it'll be a dogfight for the other one. And what's the plan for you between now and being back here in front of an audience on Saturday? I'll, I'll go back, Chris, like you say. I'll, I'll, I'll have some food when I go back. I'll rest up, get up tomorrow, probably go for a little walk and just prepare myself and get ready for tomorrow. New day. We'll go again. Well, well done on a history-making week so far. Good luck tomorrow night, Paul. Thanks for your company this afternoon. We'll see you tonight, and we hope to see you this evening as well. But as far as this afternoon is concerned, it's another chapter in the story of The Wizard, and we'll look forward to seeing how that story unfolds with Osborne at finals night. And that's how many darts he's missed for the match. Five. Double 18. The game continues. If he finds 32. What a wonderful five dart blitz that was from the wizard. And tops to turn it around. And Colin Osborne 